Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Geek Watch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Miltra, and with me I have one, two, three, four, five good brothers. We have... The living stack of comics and the uh, and the eye of Sor and the eye of Sauron, the Eter the eternally late the eternally late and gay Doku. <laughs> we have the flamboyant flyer, the living Wikipedia, and the world's biggest pull string, Good Brother Flutter. <laughs> we have the we have the man we have the we have the man with the shit we have the man with the shades himself. And the man who is, who is taking over all of your anime, Good Brother Shades. We have the CEO of Zadari Enterprises, help, host currently developing Zadari Spec 2.0, Good Brother Xanatrix Zadari, and we and we have the man who is who is not green with it, who is not green with envy, but he is still green. Good Brother Zeltrax, how are we doing tonight? <laughs> we're, doing, we're, doing we're doing well. well. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Development of uh, Zadari Spec 2.0 is going well. We predict that we're going to be a thousand percent squared soon, just like Zero Two. <laughs> oh! <laughs> hey, watch it! Watch no. it! Spoilers! We just, we're just now we're about to get to that episode next week. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, he did, game fan. <laughs> that was the surprise, Flutter. Yeah. Yeah, I knew about that. that. One. I knew about that already. I. <laughs> I was hoping to cut you off guard with that one. <laughs> that's what. That's why when when he said when he said that he wasn't gonna look it up. That's why. I, that's why I was like, "You're full of shit." I looked it up <laughs> yesterday, dude. Damn it! Hey, see, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Flutter, you're not. You're not exactly disproving my point. <laughs> no. I'm trying to. Anyway. Yep. Um. So with so with that with that said, as you as you all can see as you all can see for see right now, and as um and as Shades probably mentioned, I I initially was going to have the, going to have this week be the be the Toku themed topic, but upon upon further reflection, I decided, why am I casting with such a small net? What let's go with let's go with something a little bigger and. Thus was thus I get I uh, I DM'd shades and I get and I gave him a and I gave him a um a phrase and I wanted him to run with it. That phrase was the legend of Riku Sanjo. And that is where that is where we are this week. Um, yeah, I'll, 
Also, I should note that you can partially thank Lady K for helping me put this together. I did most of the work, but she helped me put the finishing touches to it. Mainly the gray in the background because, well, you know, it's me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Now I will. Now, um. While most of us are, <laughs> most of us are familiar with his, with his, um, with his, with his work through Tokusatsu. Um. He he's no stranger when it comes to do when it comes to doing writing for for anime and manga. In fact, he's cur in fact his um, current work is in is in manga. He's been writing um, Futo Detective, which is actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, although 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 it although if you're one of those shipper types when it com when it comes to co when it comes to Colin Rider Double, which we will talk about later. Um, you're probably you're probably gonna be mad because you lo because you lost your ship, but um, I have a simple policy: yep. head cannons get the head cannon. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I will but I will ad I will admit that of of the works that he's had, I'm pre I'm pretty sure the one he does n he would not want to talk about in an interview is. The one is the one you see slightly, slightly to the left, and that is MD Geist. Oh! 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 Everyone There's is a reason that Bennett was dreading reviewing it. Everyone oh. is entitled to their opinion. This is true, but some opinions are just flat are just flat out wrong. And one of those is anybody who is willing to defend MD Geist. <laughs> yeah. Oh. You had to remind me it exists. I had finally gotten enough brain bleach. Damn it, monk! <laughs> <laughs> you can never get the image of MD Geist out of your brain, no matter how much bleach you use. Nice you try. Can use. And use enough bleach, and I die, and then it's gone. And well, you do you do realize a death like that isn't going isn't going to send you to Valhalla, right? <laughs> you know, it might be worth that sacrifice to forget MD Geist. <laughs> you'd be you'd probably end up getting thrown into Moose Pelheim for that. I was going to say. And, and, yeah, and your and your punishment, your torture would be to continually watch MD Geist. While on fire because on you're Moose Pelheim. <laughs> so, While on fire and on a loop. That only reminds me of the dog. This is fine. <laughs> um Oh, you mean Todd Howard Spirit and <laughs> all? <laughs> anyway, 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 we're having well, we're talk we're talking about good shit right now. Don't bring don't bring that up. Don't bring that kind of thing up and piss me off. Understood. Understood. Butter punishment. Ah. Now, now, I will now I will freely admit that my that um my first introduction to to uh, Sanjo was actually in his anime work. Specifically, the mo specifically the manga that he co-wrote, "Beat the Vandal Buster," which um, I will admit some I will admit something off. I have read a good I've read a good chunk of the manga. I've never seen the anime, so I oh. can't I can't comment on how well it was handled in adaptation. I mean. Mm -hmm. I, I'd imagine it was. I'd imagine it was. I'd imagine it was fair. It was fairly straightforward because um, something like beat is hard to fuck up, especially given how it's how it almost feels like the drag. How he how the it's the Dragon Quest pitch that he couldn't do. <laughs> for yeah, <laughs> for uh, uh, Die's Great Adventure, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that Die's Great Adventure. Dice Great Adventure was okay, was okay, but it's but it would it would take many many and maybe this will be a topic for another day. It would take quite a while before we'd get before we'd get um decent anime based on video games and Dragon Quest has in my opinion Dragon Quest has never ha has not had an anime um Adapta adaptation or even or even loosely inspired approach that has been satisfactory um oh. a, good sh a good chunk of them are either just there or in a rare case managed to make me rage 
Whoa. <laughs> because whoever came, whoever did the film adaptation of your story um, clearly hate, clearly hates gamers and everyone involved with them. Oh, great! Ugh. It's it's also very hard to adapt to the the expansive games like King Quest and Final Fantasy. It's why uh, Final Fantasy Unlimited as an anime is actually so good. They decided to eschew trying to follow any of the worlds and go for the feel. I w I'd hesitate to call FF Unlimited good for the time that it was made. It still it still has all the pro problems you'd see with you'd see with Gonzo's work and um I just found I just found the thing to be really bad to be really badly paced. Um <laughs> I'll give you that. I'll the, give you that. The legend. I think the Legend of the Crystals OVA was actually better. I actually haven't seen that yet. I'll have to pick it up. Um, that one's. It's kind of a, it's kind of a sequel to five, but it's one of those. Yeah, it's a sequel, but it's taking place a few centuries after the fact. So, yeah, so everybody's long gone. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. new, new, like basically next, next. A like new, new, new generation mm -hmm. story. Um, and La last order was was um de was decent, but I think the reason last order ended up being decent is because it was animated by Madhouse. It's you're gonna have a hard time finding a bad work from them. Madhouse yeah. does fantastic work. Also, game mm -hmm. fan, you have to explain the joke. There is no joke. Oh god damn it. Uh, where's my freaking button on that? I know I have that one here. If you have to explain a joke, that is no joke. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not like I haven't heard that Gonzo joke a billion fucking times over the last twenty years. Oh DL doesn't know what MD Geist is. Be, oh, be, ha Lord. be happy you don't know, DL. Be happy. Yeah. Just, yeah. The less you know, the better. Just, yeah. just leave it at that. Trust me. Now, as far, I will, I will admit that if I d that if I did have the opportunity to in to interview Sanjo with a, with a translator, of course, because my Japanese isn't that good, um, I probably would ask him about about um. The about the Ultraman manga that he was involved in, and why he used a um, pen name, whether it was a, a mandated thing. I yeah, for, I for Ultraman Super Fighter Legend, for those who don't know, he went under a pseudonym, yeah. Ryu Sagawa. Ryu Sagawa. Um, this I'm guess I'm guessing that was something that was that was mandated to that was mandated to him because by Super Riot, yeah. <sighs> The thing about it Ultraman, might be because he was still working with Toei in some respect too. Probably, yeah. yeah. And Subarai and Toei have had their long-standing pissing match for decades. Yeah. Which is why, which is why we're, which is why for the Metal Creek releases we're not getting Ultraman vs. Human Rider. Um. Anyway, that might actually that might be for the best. Ultraman and kind it, of yeah. kind of ex putting aside the whole legal drama that. That we that we had to that we had oh, to a few years ago. Yeah, um, a child that fucking company. Ultraman kind of ap operates in its own little bubble, se separate even from most other Tokusatsu. Period. Mm -hmm. Like I'd I'd say the I'd say the closest the closest thing you the closest thing there is to any sort of cr um, crossing over when it comes to Ultraman is the Netflix project, and that's. And that's just a alternate um, adaptation, where it was just the '66 series and nothing else. Mm -hmm. Um, but you, and of, and of course, um, even with th there is definitely that possibility. Although, um, I'd say I'd say I'd say the uh, I'd say the strongest reason you might you might have operated under a pen name is ju is ju is just because is just because this was this was um 
this was early not this was early to mid nineties and it's not like his it's not like he had fully established his name yet. That wouldn't that wouldn't happen. Yeah, to him. he was still an indie yeah, he was still an indie mangaka. Plus the plus some. Um, you've got a kind of early James Cameron thing going on where it's either this person has no experience or here's his experience and it's awful. Mm-hmm. To ex- to explain that to And when it now when it comes to now um the thing that I was a li- that was a little bit surprised on when it came to his ri- his um writing and we'll get and we'll get into why this is a bit of a surprise later is is wor- is working on um Cross Wars for Digimon yeah. also known as Digimon Cross Wars. Wars. Yep, which I didn't see. Even th- even though the previous series, I ended up in- I ended up enjoying quite quite a bit. Oh, um, Savers. Yeah, I did. I which I didn't see the dub version of, so that's probably why I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Data Squad wasn't a wasn't a very good dub. It was actually one of the last yeah uh, Dig- Digimon English dubs in Total Try movies. Mm-hmm. Um. But I I know some I know some of you had dipped your toe into into crosswords was was that was that any good or did or were there some problems? It was actually yeah uh, crosswords and crosswords the the second season where they dealt with the uh, seven evil Digimon generals that was those two seasons were actually good. Crosswords Hunters wasn't very good until it got to the last like five or seven episodes when it was like the big Digimon anniversary where they had the protagonists and companions from all the other series come back and kick some ass. I mean, hell, especially in that one scene, um, Masato, a.k.a. Uh, Marcus from Digimon Data Squad, punched the Venom Iotismon in the fucking face! He's not kidding, I can back this up. Well, the thing, <laughs> the thing, with, Masa- the thing with Masaru is that he is basically a gar. And if you don't know what that is, um, <laughs> um, First off, look, first off, look it up, and and second off, you haven't be, you haven't you haven't de- you haven't deep dived the net, the net as much as I have. <laughs> but, um, that kind of thing doesn't surprise me because for ye- for years Digimon has had a bit of a yo yoing problem when it comes to its quality. Yeah, it it has. I mean, less the less set of Apple monsters, the better. Oh dear God! Don't remind me about Apple Monster. Uh, yeah, yet. Let's let's stay off of that topic since that has nothing to do with Sanjo. And quite frankly, the, the, we want to talk about good shit. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> now, good shit. Digimon Adventure One: Tamers and Frontier. There we go. <laughs> don't start with me. Now, <laughs> when it come now when it comes to something like when it comes to something like Beats, I've um. I've tooled or I've tooled around with the idea of do, of doing a series on how I did ad- how I'd adapt various anime into um t- into tabletop RPGs. Um, and if and if some and if anyone wants to argue that doing that kind of thing is is off base, keep keep in mind, Big Eyes Small Mouth start started out at started out as 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 the result of its creator being a fan of Ranma one half. So. Yeah. There's so uh, there's precedent. Yeah. When there you say Ranma one half, do you mean half of Rumiko Takahashi's works ever? Not dignifying that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just a story about a mean natured boy and a tsundere girl. And oh uh, wait, hold on <laughs> again. Half of Rumiko Takahashi's stories. <laughs> Wow! This is to say she doesn't write them well. They're just all the same story. <laughs> well, back on track here. God, damn. We're, con- we're constantly yeah, going off the rails on this one. My God. Yeah, I. W- the only um. I will. I will admit that of his that of his anime, the the only the only materials that I'm. That that I'm less familiar with that I, that maybe I should do a little bit more maybe I should look into a, lo- a little bit more maybe make it into a movie night is stuff like Cybernetics Guardian, 
Um, Ooh. That's and that's mainly that's mainly because um, I'll I'll put it like this. If you if you want if you want to know what I can what I consider one of the most imp, one of the um, most historically important um, one sh- one shot at one shot anime is in the, in the last few in the last few decades it is Megazone twenty three. Hmm. The reason I point that out is because that particular anime dem- was able to demonstrate the viability of the. O- of the um, OVA concept, which is why you saw a lot of that in the late '80s throughout the '90s. Also, DL, that's the robot. That's the robot from MD Geist. That is MD Geist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love to make his own twenty-three. Now, uh, yeah, yeah, when it comes to when it comes to, now, I've I've um. I've tipped I've tiptoed around it lo- long enough. When it comes to his Tokusatsu work, let's get let's get into double. Yeah, and this is where I get stuck. Yes. <laughs> Come, let's count up your sins. Well, ah, for, before, all right. Let me let me point this, let me point something out first. Going. Going uh, going as going as the boss was was both my was both my best and worst idea. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. so Sokichi. So yeah, he dressed as Sokichi when he came to yeah, Metro remember, God, I, a couple I, years as that. I yeah, you remember? I was that, that for a motherfucker for a while. Yeah. yeah, the problem the problem was we're wearing a three piece suit in the hot in the hot Florida sun. Also, oh. real quick, DL. Want to try that again, motherfucker? But yeah, why do you know, think I'm not doing that? Even though I prefer Philip over Shotaro. I mean, uh, the I think in order to in order to set the stage, I th- I think it's important to look at fi- to look at phase one of the Heisei era of Common Rider, which. Even, even I'm not saying I'm not saying every um, writer in the haste in the for, in the uh, for, of the first ten were te- were terrible, but what I but there was a issue of direction. Yeah, basically, what it, what what really had happened is it really started at Common Rider Ryuki because. It had basically, it, it, even to this day, it is considered the death of the old school common writer during that time because it was the complete antithesis of what a common writer was. There weren't heroes; they were just basically all everyone was in it for themselves. There was a lot of greed, a lot of backstabbing, a lot of mistrust. Everything that was against what the common writer was. And what had happened was during the next several years, up and up through decade. The creative team at Toei had a struggle to try to create a new identity for what a common writer is. It's why we had a lot of different, uh, very different uh, stories being told in each mm-hmm. series. None of them were consistent because they were all trying to find their place. And, well, they failed. E- even the good ones, they failed. What the, what's... Um... And it all it the thing the thing that I the thing that I find hilarious and infuriating is the um is the explanation given by um the Antichrist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mr. Shirakawa. Which, Mr. Shirakura. Um, yeah, Mr. Shirakura. Now, yeah. Here, here, uh, for cl- for the sake of uh, some of our not some of the people who aren't fans of our our group our group over at RVT, we differentiate. Shinichiro Shirakura, the actual person, is actually a decent guy and has actually been doing a lot of good in trying to bring Kamen Rider to the West, which we give him credit for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we have a separate identity of Mr. Shirakura, and I'm pretty sure you guys can get where I'm going with this, who has been mm-hmm. the asshole that has completely ruined Kamen Rider over the last 20 years. Looks over at the whole, at his justification for the Rider War, 9-11. And not to mention the bullshit with Hippie. 
Um, Hi, Tyson. Movies, how you doing? Yeah. The, 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 Hib- the, the Hibiki situation is... I think, I think that's a lot more complicated, so I can't put it on just him. Yeah, that's fair. Um, because there was also the fact that the they were sh- shooting. They were shooting on location a lot, and that and that got expensive. And there was the there was the whole there was the whole thing of putting something in as a writer series when it when it wasn't supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and the and the whole thing with the P, with the PTA getting on to, getting on Toei's case for some, <laughs> for some of the monster designs. Yeah, fuck parent yeah. teacher groups. Uh, and and, and rest assured, the, the, par- the parent groups will have their day in court later on in this podcast because I've got a point to make later. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. No. Which is why the guy is the best is one of the best mom ever. But anyway. Anyway. Yeah. Now when now when it when it comes to. When it comes, the reason that I bring him, the reason that I bring him up is, is the fact that Shirakura initially did did not want did not want to continue on with um, top with Common Rider. The idea, the yeah, idea the whole was three thing, the whole trio thing. Yeah, he there was the whole trio thing, and and after Agito had finished. He had thought, well, well, we've done this. The trio thing's come and gone, so let, so let's just shelve it. And that, but he got, he got out. He um, he got rank pulled on him by TV Asahi, who said, who, which gave that, which gave him a memo. Letter. Let him do his damn show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Do I need do I need to do do I need to break out the the sit down gag from 1776 cuz I will. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> or sit boy from Inuyasha. Anyway, self tracks? No. Don't tempt me. I don't like it. <laughs> <That's bloody. laughs> Moving on. <laughs> anyway, the but the the memo that he was given was had stated that we need that we need to teach youth about justice his arg which is which is the reason why I did when I saw that particular um article on the Tokusatsu network that's why I had to do that that explain this fuckery meme because <laughs> I remember after, that explain this fuckery because <laughs> After being told that, he goes and spearheads Ryuki, and his argument for his argument for that, which I still find baffling to this day, is that the concept of justice is going to mean different things to different people, which it moral doesn't. relativity, hmm, so tasty. <laughs> which, um, <laughs> if you want to get real pedantic about that, is is accurate, but it's one of those cases where you can be accurate and still wrong at the same time. Um, I, yeah, like, how, yes. I like how Chuck put it when yeah, he, no. where he said, "It's it's like a, it's like it's like having a kid who who wants a who wants a Disney princess doll for Christmas, so you give her a Princess Leia action figure. You're technically <laughs> correct, but you kind of missed the point." <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, because, yeah, to consider any character, even Shinji, a he- a hero of justice in that series is laughable at best. Why do you think, why do you think I included him in my Shizzle Adonis joke in the chat during Toku riffs? <laughs> but when it came, when it came to what, what came, a- what came afterwards, there was st- there was, you had you had a lot of the whole some some the concept of someone in over their head quite a bit, um, or so or or in the case of something like Fies, um, let the ho- the whole lacking direction apl- applied directly to the act to the actor them to the actor themselves. There's a lot of that whole someone trying to someone trying to find their place 
when you look at a lot of the <laughs> um, fa a lot of the Phase One material. Yeah. Um, I'd say oh, I'd and I'd say the I'd say the close I'd say the closest time that it that it ever came to to having the whole having there's only I'd say there's only been two instances where the whole someone trying to find their place has um has actually has actually fit in my opinion and one of one of them is one of them is not going to be too surprising the other one might the other one might make you tilt your head a bit and th those are um kiva um mostly mostly because he mostly because he started out as a complete shut in at at the start and decade. Yeah, I'd say the mm -hmm. I'd, I'd say the only ca I'd say the only case of someone not trying to do the whole find their place thing was Kabuto, but one Tendo so <laughs> Tendo Soji is is not trying to find his place because he is the place. Yeah, yeah. It's more about Kagami trying to find his place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and two. Kabuto's story is all over the place. <laughs> As someone who's actually watched crack. Kabuto, I can agree. Mm -hmm. It's on crack. <laughs> I've, I've, uh, it's still but good. Yeah. It's so fantastic. To, to help kind of bring this back around mm -hmm. to Sanjo's involvement in all of this, I think I, 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 I could step in on this point. Everything that had happened in the Phase 1 Heisei era kind of culminates in Decade basically addressing all of those issues over the past 10 years. And you can see that with a lot of the AU worlds where it's very condensed versions of those stories in many different ways. However, at that point, Decade ended up becoming, I don't know if this was intentional or not, but ended up becoming them finally just wiping the slate clean. They, they you know, they, re they merged all the different worlds together they had basically just addressed everything and were ready to start fresh. Mm -hmm. So that's when they bring in Riku Sanjo to write double. And again, I don't know if this was his idea. I would assume it is given how things have gone. But basically the idea was go back to what works. Let a they common writer be a fucking common writer again. And that, Again, that's if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's something else yeah. that, I, that I that I find interesting, um, and I should have mentioned earlier when talking about Phase One. A lot of the, you, a lot of the time, you don't hear the you don't hear the phrase "common writer" you used very often. And if it and if it is, um, it's kind of discon it's kind of disconnected. It's a case of we're using it because because that's the because that's the name on the card. Inst instead of yeah. really integrating it, um, and we'll and we'll get into why I bring why I bring that up a bit later. But a lot of Sanjo has a bit of a habit of um, of taking of taking a lot of inspiration from the past, which was which I think was I think was what definitely helped him land land the job because of because of the fact that Toei likes to do the whole. Hey, hey, if um, hey, if some, if something we did didn't, didn't work, let's go, let's go, let's go back to, let's go back to the well. We'll get, we'll get into how that can, how that can backfire in a bit, in a bit. Um, yeah. Now, I'm, yeah. I'm not, ent I'm not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure what was the reasoning that he that he went for a Japanese Chicago and Futo, but this. This was the first. It, this was the first proper instance of of actually gi of actually giving some context to where it's taking place. Because a lot of times, it's in all but named Tokyo. Yeah, like the only other time that that happened was Gain. Yeah, where they completely made a brand new city specifically for that series. Zawami, Zawami City is so good, though. It is. It is. No argument there. But yeah. that's the point is, is that, yeah, more often than not, you were taking place in Tokyo, though Kuga just kind of went all over the place. 
as we've kind of learned as we're watching it right now. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> what made... Uh, I would say what makes Futo uh, different and in many, in some small ways actually superior to Zawami City is that Riku Sanjo went out of his way to make the city itself a character. Pretty oh, much. Yeah. Oh, he did. The the thing the thing that I have I often end up comparing it to. Um, and I I know I'm in the minority when it comes when it comes to having seen this anime, and I do think more people should see it. Is the city Damn of Judah. Deal. What was that, Meldrew? You to cut you off. Sorry. Oh, the, the 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 uh, city of Judo in Heat Guy J. <laughs> ah. Um, mm -hmm. Heat Guy J. Because because in both cases you're go you're going to have certain locale beats that will that will be recurring throughout the series, and because of that, they have. Because of that, by the end, by the end of it, um, it's as it's as familiar as your as your own neighborhood would be to you in real life. And yeah, when it come when it comes to now, of course, of course, I was of course I was gonna have a so, gonna have a soft spot because of of my almost excessive familiarity with the concept of um, film noir and. This is some. This is something that I do. This is something that I do want to highlight, and why set why doing this kind of thing after a, after a writer war makes more sense than people than people would think. Film noir is to a degree cynical, and the and the mar the major reason for that is beca is because a lot of a lot of the film noir sto stories and and writings were done. After, shortly after everyone had come home from the first world war and you had you had a whole generation of of people in their in very young ages who had seen shit that they probably shouldn't have at that age mm. yeah especially especially in especially in eastern europe um and that and that colored a lot of that colored a lot of their um, approach. Now, when it when it comes to and when it com and when it comes to something like double, even though it's even though it's not outright state stating that kind of thing, it it ends up fitting in that in that chronological sense because we ha because by that point we did have effectively a a war one with one with one with not it when with um with 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 it being a process rather than it, rather than one with an outright villain because well <laughs> getting into getting into the whole to the whole aftermath of the series with decade is a can of worms into itself um, uh, let's not yeah. say we did <laughs> yeah Mm -hmm. But it's through it's it's through it's through that that we have that we have the that we have the character of Futo and um I if it were, with all with all the windmills and, and the like let's be frank it's Japanese Chicago <laughs> it, yeah. Yeah. it was literally called the Windy, the windy city. city yeah well. plus Futo literally means wind capital. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um and in the in that partic and in that particular regard, then we also have the fact that the you have a when it came to the when it came to the design of the tit of the titular rider in double, the half the half and half rider, you ha you have a much more you have a much more simple design. As, op as opposed to some, as opposed to some of the more complex and ornate designs in the past, I'd say I'd say the I'd say the design simplicity was already starting to lean that way a little bit with with decade, but you but that whole but the whole really com really complex really 
um, ornate, des ornate designs that kind of hit its proverbial nadir with Kiva. Yeah. I mean, that thing was so over the top that the, that the, the base suit, the, the, the stunt, the, the suit, uh, the stunt wear yeah. couldn't even move in the damn thing. Yeah. It's like Iowa couldn't move. Yes. And because, because of, because of that, now the on, the only the only thing that I find kind of a letdown is they lost the trench coat. <laughs> oh yeah, know. I saw I saw those I saw those design early designs. Uh, I, I think that might have been a little too much. <laughs> um, that might and a little too on the nose. It pr that's probably that's probably the reason why it di that's probably the reason why it did it didn't happen. But I. The th the thing that I remember I remember a lot of people talking about when we first saw the f when we first saw the footage was this was the first time that we had an un a unironic rider with a scarf in oh in over tw in over twenty years because black and black RX didn't have one. No, no the last yeah. one I had one was I want to say. Uh, think Super One. Think, yeah, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. But and and unlike and even unlike them, where it does you can kind of justify here, it absolutely is a perfect fit because it goes along with the whole wind motif, especially since it's mainly used in his cyclone form, where its whole power cyclone. comes from the wind. Yeah, and it's a windbreaker scarf, which. Well, got him on the nose there. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, use. Now, this was the this was the first time. Oh yeah, it was the cross. Now, anyway, the other the other thing I I will admit is that um, I had when I when I saw I remember seeing a um a design a design thing where they where they talked about some they talked about the different base forms and I remember making a joke of. Was San was Sanjo playing was Sanjo playing Circle of the Moon at one at one point during the writing? <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bl I'm not gonna blame him because that's a because that's a damn good game, even if the graphics were a little too dark for the original GBA. Yeah. And I don't mean that in a graphic sense. I mean in a the GBA needed a brightness scale kind of way. <laughs> There's a reason why the GBASP came out because it needed a fucking backlight, is what it needed. Mm -hmm. It did. Um, because the whole and the whole dual setup system with the, with that with a element and effect is um something that's shared in both in both Circle of the Moon and with and with Double. Yeah. One half of the uh, and go ahead. Yeah, it, it's it it works in multiple le on multiple levels with this because, yeah. Uh, one side is the spirit, which also is the elemental side. It, you know, it, for those who have not seen Double, the way it works is that when they hench in, one guy transfers his spirit into the memory, which can get, which then transfers over to the main to the main guy, uh, Shotaro. Which, by the way, on the nose there, Shotaro, based clearly named after Shotaro Ishinomori, the original mm -hmm. creator. Not also, like that last name literally means means right yeah but so basically he takes and then he takes that one and combines it with his own set of memories which are the memories of the body which can form the physical aspects mm -hmm. uh you, you've got a short you've got a close range uh, fist fighter a mid-range staff fighter and a long-range gunner pretty and pretty those two power those sets of that creates an, uh, an in, a set of combinations that can handle nearly any situation which yeah. would made for a very versatile set of fight scenes. No fight was the same because of that 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 versatility. No, it wasn't. Um, it, the other the the other thing the other thing that um and this is this was one of those tiny details that would that would end up getting over that would end up getting overlooked by a lot of people that I did enjoy. If you look, if you look close, if you look close at um, Shotaro's face during the during the sequence, you see, you see all those lines. Yes, that's a bit of a nod to Common Rider Two. 
Yeah, that's a reference to Nego. Since and I think, and then that goes back to what we were talking about earlier: how he looks to the past. Mm -hmm. There are a ton of references to past common writers in many aspects of Double. The biggest one being the fact that his Joker form is a black rider that is a close range combat fighter, a very big nod to common rider black. And there's also his Luna form, which has the power of illusions, you know, like the shadow of a moon. Mm -hmm. Not to mention the whole thing with, bl with black is even more so considering Shantanos actor was watching black when he was younger. So yeah, there you go. It all adds up. Now, even now, even with even with that, the it was an appropriate timing to to go with to go with USBs as the as the uh, gimmick of so, uh, oh it was mostly because ar around that time you around that time USB um, drives were were start were starting to become more and more prevalent now and nowadays of course nowadays of course they're ubiquitous and. The fa and the fact that a lot of a lot of, again a lot of his work is go is drawing up is drawing upon the is drawing upon the past and using that in new ways, so you've got so you've got a literal version of that with the Gaia memories them being mem being memories of co of places of places things and concepts that are hit that are hidden within the earth. Wait, you fan? Is that true? That Hikaru Yamamoto wasn't happy that Philip made a better woman than her. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll oh have to discuss God. that in a second. Yeah, there's that. That's an episode to talk yeah. about. But uh, yeah, that's the thing. And then that was another interesting thing about the Gaia memories, not just for the heroes, but the Dopont memories, mm -hmm. the bad, the the monster of the week memories, was yeah. that they literally could make a monster out of anything. And the more vague the concept, the more broad the concept, the more powerful because of the more memory, more a memory it has access to, the more ability. Oh yeah, it can that's right. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and that's what made Double's power so good was because they were, you know, while they were somewhat specific, they were still very vague. Again, illusions that can mean any number of things. It can. Um, and to and. To that, to that end, I suppose this would be a good. This would be a good amount of a good time to dis to discuss the fact that and with any good with any good he any good hero is only is only as good as its villains, and that brings us to museum. The oh, Sonozaki yeah. family. Yep, museum and the Sonozakis. Now, for now, first off, first off, I'll get the obvious out of the way is the fact that. Going on, going on the whole, going on the whole motif of of a film noir, having a having a well off family that it that may that may or may not ha may or may not um, ha have con have connections to or having connections to organized crime is a very noir thing to do. It yeah, is. I mean, while it wasn't explicitly stated, you could essentially look at Ryu Sonozaki, or Ryube Sonozaki as a mob boss. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah. Which um, okay, I will I will admit I'm not too I'm not too proud to admit the fact that there were a couple times where I where I called Ryube the Japanese Elton John. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he looks it. He so looks it. He does. And when it come, and um, I think I think that I think that helps the whole off-putting thing because putting because with him using the terror dopant or not the or with him using the terror memory, sorry, he's because the Sonozaki family due to, due to their equipment aren't dopants. Game fan, we're getting well, to actually that. actually, they are. It's just they're a different kind of dopant. Mm -hmm. Because the, re the the equipment that they use helped, re you know, it, it didn't reduce their powers, but it restricted a lot of the more corrupting elements of the Dopont Gaia memory. Yeah, the Gaia drivers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Since the Unless someone modified it, because <laughs> that did happen. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. the thing, the, now obvious, obviously the term Dopont has roots in, do in doping, i.e. Dr drug, drug abuse. 
And which very much isn't fitting in that. Mm-hmm. And what's fit what's what's fitting about what's fitting about it is is the fact that wi- that with applying those memories, um, the line the line between that per- that particular memory and its effects and the u- and the user starts to blur. Yeah, and again, game fan, we'll get to him. Don't worry. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're jumping the gun here, but yeah, and, and the, the 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 idea behind the Dopont memories works again on the one thing I like about it is everything about double works on multiple levels because yeah you know it was probably a direct corruption but it also goes to the idea that you're giving ordinary humans power and as the saying goes power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely and that was the dopants in a nutshell well to, to give to to give a case in point with the whole the lot the line between the person and memory blurring Consider consider the whole thing with um, T Rex. Mm. Uh, oh yeah, uh, for the second episode, or from the third episode. And, second. Oh yeah, it was second. Yeah. And how the and how and how Phyllis warned she's gonna she's gonna try and eat you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because well at that at that po- at that point with the, with en- with enough uh, with enough abuse of it. Like if Wait. She, if she had gone. Her? Sorry, Mulder, but cure? You're just realizing this now? <laughs> wow, you're a little behind. <laughs> cure, you are so slow, you gotta speed up to stop. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. The, and... Hey, Cure, did you hear about this, this thing that they call Twitter? It's a really nice social media. Uh, <laughs> I think they'll be really big. <laughs> Back on track. Yeah. Is now. I will. I will note that when it that when it comes to when it comes to the when it comes to the family, the the whole the whole idea of ha- of having a, a new co- of having a newcomer come into a world that they pro- probably understood a bit, but not but not fully in Ki- in Kirihiko. Um. Is it again? Is a very is a very noir thing, including how he met his end. Um, but this is this is where I get to something where I under I understand um, Sanjo's positioning on it, but I don't quite I don't quite agree. And oh, is, this I remember you telling us about us in the roundup about this a while back. Anyway. Yeah, and that is yep. that is the that is the whole notion of um ki- of killing off. Um, Kirihiko. Now, I understand. I understand why this was done, and this is this is where I'll get. This is where I'll get into the two. There are two flaws that Sanjo has as a writer that he has freely admitted. Um, the first one is that he he feels that he's at his best when he has somebody to bounce off of, which which is why he, when um when his co when his co writer had to had to take a break for a while he. Put beat the Vandal Buster on hiatus for months. Um, he d- he he see he sees him he he sees himself as somebody who's not going to be as good if you have if you have him just on his own. The second and this is where the, this is the more important one is he has admitted that he's not good with large casts because he tries to go very detailed with his uh, characters. Yep. And he do- he does have an eye for detail. I don't think anybody's going to dispute that. But having that kind of eye for detail yeah. is a double-edged sword. Oh, it is. Yeah, if he has too many characters to work with, some people are going to get left behind when he has to focus more on the very the main important characters. Mm-hmm. And there will be a discu- we will be getting to that when we talk about a certain Sentai series he did later on. Yep. Now, with now with that with that said, that whole that whole that whole attention to detail that I mentioned when it came when it came to Futo that applies not just to how we saw it 
in the sh- in the show in the show, but how it was how it was advertised outside of it. For ex- for example, get for example, Wakana is is known for is known in the show for having her own rate for having her own radio segment, which they actually did in on Japanese radio. And, By the way, Wakana is best girl. And and, <laughs> yeah. and when that when that segment wasn't needed anymore, they stop they stopped that particular thing. And I believe um, I believe several episodes of that were. Tra- were translated by TV Nihon. Yeah, they were. pretty much all. Um, were tra- like all the main important ones were translated by TV Nihon and released. So the other is the fact that all of the all of the insert songs were d- were done under different pseudonyms that were um n- that were nods to um weather disasters. Yeah. Yeah, some of them are more like Cyclone Effect, um, Finger on the Trigger, a couple of other ones. Yeah, each of each of them was each of them was a nod to a um, to a to a um, meteorological disaster that had happened. Mm-hmm. Um, and just to just to use. Um, finger on the trigger as a as a example. Um, it's listed as being as being performed by by Florida Keys. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that is terrible. <laughs> and yet, as a Floridian, I can say it fits like a glove. Yeah. As. Um. So, um, in the in the case of cyclone effect, that was listed as be as being performed by li- by um Labor Day. Mm-hmm. <sighs> um. And for and so, and something like free, um, free your heat, um, by Ga- by uh, Galveston nineteen, which it's just a reference to the nineteen nineteen um. Hurricane in Galveston, Texas. Mm-hmm. And the thing, and doing doing those sort of things kind kind of goes into the notion where you could you could just you could justify that Labor Day or Galveston nineteen were name were names of actual bands within Futo. You could. Um, yeah. Now what? Now um. The, the thing that, the, the thing that I find when it comes to um. When it comes to somebody like Shotaro. As as well as well as well as, as, well as Philip, you do have what you have present in that is the difference between street smart and literal book smart. Yeah. There's a reason yeah. why Fl- there's a reason why we keep roasting Flutter and calling him Flutter Philip. <laughs> well, to be honest, both relatable to me, and, and there are yeah, multiple that... points in the show where he's se- where he's shown to be seemingly autistic, like the finger thing. That's that's an that's an that's a reference to something called stimming that autistic people do. And it makes sense. And given given the way he the way he grew up, and well, kind of if you say grow up, considering spoilers. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he uh, wasn't all there mentally. Yeah, exactly. But he wasn't all there mentally. He couldn't be. Like things had <laughs> completely gone awry for him. Uh, and that's and so he was unable to ever really mentally develop properly. Whereas Shotaro having, <laughs> but Shotaro having grown up, at having been basically trained as a detective thanks to Sakichi, understood how the streets worked. And the one thing I liked about Shotaro, 
And this is something that th this is actually part of the running gag that Shotaro has, but when you really break it down, it's actually a really awesome good part of his character. Is that they, they joke about him being half boiled. Mm -hmm. The idea that, you know, he acts like a hard ass detective, but in reality, he's a total softy. The thing of it is, and this is something that another reviewer we I followed, Deshintas, pointed out, is that he's not as soft as he appears. Yes, he opens up. He cracks jokes. He reacts to things. He can get a little over-emotional at times. But that's only when he doesn't need to be hard-boiled. When he doesn't need to be... A, uh, doesn't have to have his armor on. And I don't just mean the suit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, gr it's hmm? granted... Early, early on, he's still he is very much still imitating the boss. Yeah. Oh, he is. And and gra and gradually that imitation gives way to him um, carrying that carrying that on in his in his own way because due to the whole thing with begins with begins night even even if. Even if what ended up happening wasn't technically his fault, as far as, as far as he's concerned, he f he felt responsible for the boss's death. I.e., if he, had I'm actually going to correct you there, Monk, mm -hmm. because he wasn't trying. He was. He thinks he was imitating the boss, but what he was actually doing throughout the series was he was it for, throughout the first half of the series for the most part, he was imitating his ideal image of Sokichi Narumi. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, but in the latter half, when he starts really coming to his own, he's a lot lo more like Sokichi than even he realizes. Because when you really start to learn how Sokichi is, especially in stuff like uh, Movie War Core, when you actually go back and see how he used to be, he's not that unlike Shotaro. The only no, difference he's is, is he's not as good about being emotional. But he's hard when he needs to be and kind when it works best. Which is, we, which is, which is why the, rem, the memory that, that he associates with the most is so, is so appropriate. The, the Joker. Yeah, the the wild card. In t in Taro, the Joker is known as the Fool, the on the only card of the Major Arcana that doesn't have a Roman numeral attached. Mostly because the Roman yep. didn't have a didn't have a numeral for ze for zero. The I think the I think the concept of writing zero wouldn't be wouldn't be around for a few more centuries. Um, Jesus, the L. The I'm trying to be hero anyway. Uh, the thing, the thing of it, the thing of it is, is that his is that his biggest strength has always been his ability to adapt. That's why even if, even if it's funny to see to see him to see him yelling like an to see him yelling like an like an idiot over something that didn't quite fit how things were gonna work. Um, oh! <laughs> My hand is a cow. <laughs> uh, Rank Yama, I love you. It is bec is um after after that kind of thing, he do he does rec he does recover quickly, even even if he even if it has to deal with something that he doesn't acknowledge, like say like say Akiko owning the owning the building. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> it's in her name. Yeah, and I'll have something to say about her in a minute, but let's finish with Sotoro first before we move on to her. Yeah. Um. But. But it's through it's through it's through that, of course, that he ends up that he ends up establishing his own his own group of irregulars. Who obviously the irregulars aren't go aren't going to be given the. The uh, most amount of most amount of screen time because they're si because it's a situational affair, and yeah, each of them is going to be knowledgeable in a in a certain thing. But you have you you have you have um contacts within within the police 
as a as a Akio and, uh, detective does have. Even if yeah, even if, and, uh, Shun, even and if one of Jeff. them has the has the whole notion of he's not easily he's not easily fooled. He's skilled at be he's not he's not easily tricked. He's skilled at being fooled. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Jiro, love it. Um, Jiro. Then we ha- then we have we have Queen and Elizabeth two, who um. I believe at the time they were two. They were two members of AKB48, and have since they were retired. yes, and have since retired. Um, he and the only the only per, the only person who who the only the only actor who has a who has a much deeper story among the irregulars is um Watcherman. And oh yeah, mainly, be, mainly because. This was shortly after the prizes stunt, which was which um was really really biz- a really really b- bizarre k- kind of show, even by Japanese game show standards. This one was a little on the messed up end of things. I do recommend people look people look into it. Okay. Um. But it end, it ends up it ends up painting a um, different light when it comes to when it comes to the living eggplant. <laughs> yeah. But there. But we've talked we've talked about him. We've talked about. I will I will mention one thing when it comes to Philip. the The whole idea of being able to connect to this vast library that actually does have a precedent. If you ever have, if you ever have some free time, I refer the you Akashic to records. yeah the Akashic Records. Oh yeah, the Akashic Records. I've heard about those. Mm-hmm. I be- that is a concept I believe in Zoroastrian um, ism. I can never get the pronunciation of that. Oh, I just call it Zoroastrianism. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The uh, of a of effectively a library that contains all the knowledge in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's and it's been used it's been used a couple of times in other stories like like a like its own little faction in Mage the Awakening and, a, mm. and Ascension. Yep. Let's not let's um let's let's not, not we're talking about good things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but then we get to a case of 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 a woman who um originally I hated and. As time went as time went on, I hated less. Let's t- let's talk about Akiko. There we go, Akiko no Rumi. Yeah, she is an example of the obligatory annoying character, but done well. I won't say she was amazingly well, right? but she's a character that starts off almost unbearable, but that's only because she doesn't have a full grasp of what's going on. She just sees things as as she as it's right in front of her. You know, she just sees her father's missing, though at this point she should have presumed he was dead. She should have. Like and but as time goes on and she starts to learn about what's really going on with things, she starts to realize that that there's a lot more going on than just her. And you start to see her become more involved in things and more appreciative of not only what her father had done, but who is now carrying on his legacy. A key example of that was how she developed in the Sweets arc. Yeah. I'd actually... Even early on, about early on, but... And, well, yeah, there were a couple of silly scenes, like when he tries to... When, he, when Shotaro does try to call her out, which, by the way, that's how you do an annoying character. You call them out on their bullshit! Yeah! But... After, as he's trying to tell her, you know what, what, how to really behave, she ends up running off, doing her own thing again. Mm-hmm. But at at the end, when she confronts the sweet Dopont, and even Shotaro sees his sees his old boss, sees Sokichi in her, mm-hmm. that's when you start to realize she's now under a little more understanding of how things go. Mm-hmm. 
And I think that was a really good early step in developing her as a character and making her oh, was. part of the team. Mm -hmm. Also, Flutter. Yes, sir. Yeah, I was going to ask you to say it. <laughs> and I, I will admit, I did, I did enjoy the gag a few, a few times where it seemed like there was different writing on that slipper. Oh yeah, <laughs> there was. Yeah. I think, there I think was. The, I think the Sorry. reason I end up liking that gag is because of how much I like the, how much I like the panda gag in Ronma One Half. <laughs> like, you can't, you can't talk, so he just, so he just has a, he just has a sign with whatever he's saying. So he's anime. What he's an anime Wiley Coyote. And then I of course, the crowd, the P.S. that is this sounds of the slippers, was near the end. Dowsing slippers. Oh, <laughs> oh God! <laughs> wow. I, I get the feeling that I get the feeling that was one of those things that somebody suggested in the in the in the writer in the writers' rooms and was and was just like that's a com that's a completely dumb idea. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> and hang, but. Since we t since we talked about Akiko, we may as we may as well get into the one of the one of the weirdest arcs during the whole series, which was the liar arc, and that's something that we haven't touched on is the fact that mm -hmm. they, this is where they started doing the whole um about having a bunch of two part arcs instead instead of go instead of going standalone. Well, that was double in a nutshell. Every mm -hmm. arc in double was a two part arc. Yeah. Themed after a letter of the alphabet. Yes, and that was also <clears throat> kind of the gimmick, considering the entire thing was about doubles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, when it came to the, I consider the, I consider the liar arc to be the, um, to be the most whisko tangy, ta whiskey tango foxtrot of the of the it entire is. series, because uh, that that goes without saying. <laughs> First off, you first off you have some of the you have some of the weird effects with the liar do, with the liar dopant itself, which actually has some actually has some clever tricks, and manages to fool them with the whole the memory's broken apart, and it and then it ends up turning out to be a fake. Um, but th but then in order too. to in order to trap the, in order to tr in order to lay a trap for them, we have a um. Literal trap. <laughs> yep, literal, yep. Oh dear God! Masaki Suda trap. <laughs> he will never be able to live that down. No, he no. won't. And I think what and the that the culmination of that whole thing is just uh, is just Akiko go. Doing, doing the, doing the falling gag on on stage and not being able to comprehend what she just saw. Yeah. Oh, also, yes, there is it one did, of the yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway. And then there's also yeah, uh, what was that? Uh, no, go, no, go ahead. It's coming to yeah, yeah, comment about the uh, the that arc giving us Philip and Shotaro singing. Finger on the trigger, yes, and of course, cameo by the legendary Ichiro Mizuki. But of course, if we're going to talk about that part of the arc, we kind of have to talk about the other elephant in the room. Oh, Jimmy! Jimmy! Oh, oh God! Oh, the the beat of eardrums everywhere! Yep, cameos from, from Aya Kamiki in Tokyo as well, but anyway. Mm -hmm. Yes. But yeah, Jimmy, the the... The, the screeching voice that would make nails on a chalkboard sound like Beethoven. Yeah. Which is which is why which is why I'm glad that I don't have hyperacusis. Also, hairball, that's your one. Yeah! That's your one, fucker. <laughs> what did he do? Little Jimmy! Oh, God. Yeah. You do one of those again, and I will kick you and your little Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> and DL Bot, you can join him on that. Yeah, there's oh, your one too. 
No, you don't even get your one for that. <laughs> no. Now you should have known better. Anyway, back to Jimmy. The, back to the thing the thing that makes the thing that makes the thing that makes all all the all, all the gender jokes even even worse was the was the was the fight scene that involved a quite literal common rider. <laughs> 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 to the to the point that even t- even TV Nihon had to break the fourth wall and sh- and and have and have one of their guys do their reaction on camera after <laughs> after, after the episode of co- of course they're not gonna jump they're not gonna jump in midway but <laughs> there's re- there's been a few there were a few gags gags with that inc- including including the including the money gag that um. <laughs> That prompted that prompted them to use pedal bear. Oh God, yeah. Uh, yeah, bad. But I'm get I'm guessing some I'm guessing somebody was on was on um was on TV too many times. Um, it was. Apparently. Yeah, they were. Also, money. The money Dupont has the best activation sound. Money. 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 Um. Thank you, Fumihiko Tachiki, who... By the way, Shades, you've been hearing him in Kuka. He's the narrator. That doesn't surprise me in the least, and I am not complaining! He... He yeah. also... He also did the... Did the voices for the, um... For the, for the main gimmick in Sonic Colors, which prompted one fan artist to... To, to take yeah. the... Wisp. To take the Wisp and make them into Gaia memories. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that was awesome. The but the other the other thing the other thing is um with the, even with even even with those particular devel- those particular developments since we've talked about Akiko we may as well talk about her other half which the fa- the fact that he ended up becoming the Brit. Ended up becoming the breakout is de- is definitely saying is definitely saying something. Let's talk about the man who, oh, yeah. who does not take questions, Ryu Terui. Oh, oh I'll be I am. So. And in talking about Terui, we really have to talk about how Double as a whole was about reclaiming the name of Common Rider because. That really is what Terui's story becomes. And, and, and Double is in general, is the idea that the, the city, the people in the city started calling Double their town's common writer. And Terui comes in wanting to become a common writer, but as the, Heisei, as the Phase 1 Heisei had been doing, he was doing it for all the wrong reasons. He was out for revenge. Mm-hmm. And he had to learn that that's not what a common writer is about. No. There's al- there's also the f- there's also the fact that um the I'd hey, say, he was I'd doing it for the, John Shinkuro Isaka. Yeah. Rest in peace to his actor. I'd I'd say th- I'd say that the um uh, of course of course. I ha- I have seen Sh- I have seen Shinta's review and he was he did make a fair point by comparing com- comparing him comparing him to V three who all who also oh, yeah. had, who also had to be talked out of um pursuit becoming a common writer for the sake of revenge the yeah uh, the other thing the I'd say the only real nitpick I have with with him is the fact that. I was never one. I was never one hundred percent on the translation of his particular catchphrase. The whole "don't," the whole "don't ask me questions." Mm-hmm. Like I get, I get the general gist, but I feel, I feel like that was one instance where the um, wor- where the wording was a, a tricky one to translate. Because yeah. It's yeah, suppo- it's supposed to be to the effect of "don't def- don't defy me." Yeah, I think Kieran Crystal put it best. Don't question me. Mm-hmm. Um, which would, 
which would make sense since he since um he was since he's instead of instead of being instead of being a detective he's a full, he is a full on um police officer. Mm -hmm. He's it's and in the in that in that particular regard with with him giving him the, giving him a uh, do, giving him a memory like Axel def as well as as well as the en as well as the engine blade which I will freely admit I used as I used as my ultimate counter argument to when people asked why don't they just use the weapons without transforming and then I point out the then I use that <laughs> gift of of the engine blade getting pulled out for the first time that's why. Yeah, the thing. Clonk. Yeah, the thing. Fucking heavy as shit. Clonk. <laughs> I don't mean to drag them behind him all the time. I saw the chaser. Yeah, because that thing is that thing is heavy enough to br to break concrete. Also, Flutter, is there a reason why you turned your camera on? Oh, what the hell? I have, I have no <laughs> idea where that happened. Yeah, your webcam's on, buddy. He's You're lucky you were wearing My something. Mistake. <laughs> Drink for uh, bots. Ain't technology fun? Luckily, that isn't what's getting streamed. Yes. Anyway. Anyway. Getting back to Terry. Oh, yeah. yeah. That that right there is the sum up of everything. Because it's like, yeah, you know, everyone thinks, oh, they, they can they can use those weapons without it, and then you see Terry. <laughs> you want to retake that, buddy? It it took him forever to get to the point where he can't even wield that thing. And even then, you can even even in the most recent his most recent appearance in the Gates movie in Kamen Rider Zio, he still has to throw all his weight into every swing. Yeah, yeah, unlike unlike most of the weapons we see in Sentai, where they can usually use them outside of transformation. Um, Common Rider weapons are heavy because remember that Common Rider started be, as this evil organization. Took a human and made him into a cyborg against his will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> now, I will. I will. Fr I will freely admit that the en that um when it comes to rider weapons, the engine blade is one of my personal favorites. In part, in in part because of, in part because of its design and the and the pseudo guy memories it uses that are based on well engines. Um. <laughs> jet, jet, steam, and electric are the ones that were us, and were the ones that were seen. And also, um, some of you already already know that I have a soft, and I mentioned this last week. I have a soft spot for Final Fantasy VIII, and I have, a, and that soft spot extends to the concept of a gunblade. And I, and which they did extremely well with the engine blade. Yeah. It is a it is a sing. Now, granted, it's a it's a single shot that's lo that's loaded like a sh that's loaded like a shotgun. Although, although my own approach is that this is what would happen if um, somebody turned the super shotgun from Doom and made it into a sword. Oh <laughs> God! <laughs> although not the super shotgun from Doom Eternal, because um, that's a beast on its own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The super shotgun has always been his baby. Mm -hmm. Um, and and I know somebody might ask, well, why why call it the super shotgun if it's just a double barreled? <laughs> because it's better. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen the super shotgun in Doom? Trust me, folks. There's a reason it's super. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, now. That be, that being that that particular thing being being said, when it comes to when it comes to him, even d even down the road when he when he sort of when he sort of calms down, there is st there is still that um there is still there is still that nature of of don't of of, of intimidation even when he doesn't want to be. Um, it habit like that doesn't break easily. Yeah. And while I, while I was iffy on it at while I was iffy on it at first, him having that rela having having a relationship and eventually marrying Akiko um, ends up making sense for him because it helped because it helped him kind of get his um set his gr his grounding. 
Yeah, Akiko grounded her or grounded him. Mm-hmm. Freudian slip. No, not not a slip. Remember, Philip's a better woman than she is, so she's clearly the man of the relationship. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, consider how whipped, consider how whipped Taro is. Really? <laughs> consider you know, he's not wrong. Exactly how whipped no. Bu is. Yeah, he's not wrong. I mean, did you see him in the guy movie? In the guy movie? In the guy wizard movie? Yes. Or no, better yet, did you see him in the drive movie? Yes. <laughs> now, that be- that being that being said. I will. I will admit that um, that when it came to the target of his revenge, Isaka, I re- I really, really loved um, the design of the weather dotant. In part, oh yeah, oh, weather so dotant, amazing. In in part due to how cl- in part due to how clean it is, and also the fact that it's it's made clear that when he, that when he you wanna sh- die. Flutter, just type it out in the what? chat instead of constantly interrupting. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Mulder. Yeah. When it comes when it comes to D, when it comes to um when it comes to Is- when it comes to Isaka, he it he is the he is the I would I would make the mad scientist that, um approach, but um I'd say he no. I'd say I'd say he's more akin to a. I'd say he's more akin to a scientist you would see in a um, in a in a pulp horror work. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, I can see that. Um, mostly just for for me for me there there's a certain there's a certain primal horror in the idea of a doctor applying applying their applying their knowledge for less noble pursuits. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. I think I think it's I think it stems from how, I think it stems from how chilling somebody like Sweeney Todd can be. Now Sweeney oh, Todd was a yeah. barber and not a and not a doctor, but yeah. um, keep in mind there was a point in time when those two were one and the same. Exactly, mm-hmm. and what really helps with Isaka is the fact that the weather Dopont is a very very broad turn and even before we learn what he really is capable of just the base weather power alone leaves so much possibilities for uh, potential power Mm -hmm. which is why he's such a powerful dopant to begin with and then comes the revelation that that's not the only memory he's got in his system he (laughs) cheats yeah He's got multiples, and that led to his downfall. Yeah, that's all. Which is it also did. the reason why he's probably the only he's probably the only man in Japan who could out eat me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but yeah, he's for, still alive. Yeah, yeah. That that's the thing. For those who haven't seen it, basically, he finds a way that if he if he take if he's he if he's if a dope if a dopant memory is. Uh, utilized in specific ways or the the user is pushed to their limits once it's fully integrated and then they die the memory becomes free reign and he can actually use it on himself he can create a new port for himself and use the memory in combination with all the others that he gets Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and at one point we see he's got like Three, two to three dozen of these things in him already. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which makes me wonder what kind of powers he actually had. What was he not showing us? I'd so do I. I'd imagine that he, I'd imagine that he had he had quite a bit, but even for even for him, it was ne- it was never truly enough because mm. the throughout it all the well for, first off it's first off it's revealed that. <laughs> I do think I do think it was a I do think it was a nice diversion where where because of the fact that he that we thought that we thought re, we thought um Terui's parents were killed by an by an ice related dopant that having um that ha- that having ice age in that particular arc was a nice um a nice bait and switch right. because you see what it can do and you can see why 
Tillery would jump to that conclusion, and then and then realize, oh shit, he he ended up going after the wrong guy, especially since the Ice Age Dolpont had only been around for about a week. Yeah, yeah. And what helped was the flower because he had seen the flower at this at the scene of his parents' murder and assumed it was the same mm-hmm. when it was that was just a red herring. And I love the way that he finally learns the truth when he first meets Isaka. When Isaka just outright tells him, Oh, yes, Tarui. You know, I, I know that name. I remember your father shouting it before I killed him. What? <laughs> that and it's revealed afterwards that there were, there were not just a series of freezing incidents, which was the reason why looking, just, looking up just that was, was kind of a dead end. But also, also, dr- also drowning, electrical shock, burning, and uh, and uh, and other fu- and other fun stuff as if, as he was trying to test the limits of his new, of his new dopant. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and because of, I think I think that's the thing that ends up making that design work for me. I think. Is how clean it is. Like you, you look at a, you look at a lot of monster designs in Tokusatsu in general, and um, in this in this case in particular. And the best way for me to describe them is rough. Mm. Mm-hmm. There's there's usually a there's usually a lot of parts. There's there's a very there's not a whole lot of smoothness, and a lot of times it's um. Even, even, even some of the stranger ones. They they may have some humanoid um, appear, appearances to them in part, but not fully. Yeah, and yeah. even in double, like I think the arms Dopont would be a good example of of how rough it could get sometimes. And mm-hmm. but with with weather. If you had switched his belt around and just and just made him and just made and just said that it was a rider, it wouldn't look out of place. No, it wouldn't. A bit over the top in terms of design, but I've seen weirder. Mm-hmm. So have I. Butter. You hit the button again if you don't stop. Yep. But that do- that does bring that does bring me to um to the upgrade form that Axel ended up getting. Um, trial, which oh, yeah. which has him which has him go from from cr- from crotch rocket to motocross. <laughs> and I'll be honest, I think trial was one of the very one of the few missteps of the main series because he never quite learned how to use it properly. No, Shroud never told him that. Well, no, no, actually, she did. She made it clear that he's supposed to stop relying on his power and start focusing on just fast-hitting strikes. But aside from his finisher, he never did that. Oh, yeah, you're right. I would, I would say, yeah, yeah that's, that's, def- that's, definitely a mis- that's definitely a misstep. Um, I will admit I, enjo- I enjoyed the fact that we, got, that we got at least one Hokutono Ken joke out of it. <laughs> but, <laughs> the the thing the thing is is that un, unlike uh, is that it's even with that misstep I'd say trial is the be, is the best use of a of a high speed form that we had seen up to that point because previously when we've oh, had high speed forms there's always been some sort of caveat in the case of Kabuto that caveat was time dilation i.e. he wasn't literally moving fast it's just that he w- it's just that he had a different perception of time in the case of axel he was only moving at mach 1 and only for 10 seconds yeah yeah but for trial it was pure speed and because which is the which is the reason why I didn't bat an eye at its um at the fact that it didn't have the same level of um, striking power. Um, that that being that being said, 
the idea of the idea of tra of training to use the trial memory through a through a uh, motocross track. I feel like that was just an excuse to film at a mo at a motocross track. So do partly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I apologize. I was going to say that uh, wasn't the excuse like he had to learn speed and control, and that was the. God, it's been so long since I watched Double, but. Like oh, he had to, about right. Yeah, he had, he had to learn oh what, how to control the speed so he wouldn't fall off the bike and could complete the uh, the entire cr uh, track. And that was the same thing he had type of control he had to learn to be able to use the trial memory, or it would overwhelm him. Mm -hmm. That's that's just a. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm with I'm with the monk on mostly probably an excuse to go film at a motocross track. Which um, which makes me makes me wonder if, if it's gonna, if it's going to be about speed and control, why not put? I was going to say why not put him in a formula car, but um, that might be pushing, <laughs> one that might be pushing it a little bit. Two, um, I don't I don't think I don't think you I don't think Yuji Ide would be would be cool would be cool with would be cool with seeing a bunch of actors on a formula track. And three, um. Have you ever have you ever seen an F one race? <laughs> I'm not getting anywhere near those things. I, I'm pretty sure that the first time he messed up, um, that would that would be the end of Tedui because he's not transformed while driving that. Yeah, exactly. Well, there's 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 also the there's also the fact that I'm pretty I'm pretty sure Toei wouldn't want to get in trouble with the with the FIA. True. No, hell no. Is true, as I've mentioned, as I've mentioned in the past, um, when for, when Ferrari got when Ferrari got busted cheating, the FIA slammed slammed them with what with what is considered the big was considered the um big the biggest fine in any in any sporting um league period. Whew! Because they got fined they got fined a total of fifty million dollars. Jesus, mother of God. If you want Mother the details, cat. I recommend looking at the Spygate, the Spygate incident. Um, mm -hmm. Yankees, um, crazy Yankees, done done a done a video on that. It's and it was actually pretty good. Um, when it comes, when it comes, but when it comes to when it, when it comes when it comes to um when it comes to trial. The I will admit that the I, I will admit that the the form it's the form itself I do I do appreciate the the motocross approach because well when you when it comes to bike history in in Common Rider we hadn't had a whole lot of we it had been a while since we had um a motocross bike as a, as opposed to as opposed to a crotch rocket which we had used many times. Which was which was used many times over the over the last few years. Uh -huh. It was it was it was a crotch rocket, or in rare cases like um, Hibiki and Kiva, um, a lean back. So I believe I believe the model that they used for um, for Kiva's bike was the Valkyrie Rune. Yeah, at least, le at le and unless they pulled out that uh, the the couple of times they pulled out the Buran booster, which let's not even get into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the. But the. Uh, the other thing is that is once Isaka had pretty had pretty much had pretty much gotten his revenge. There wasn't a case of shifting the goal shifting the goalpost. It was just it was just. Well, I've got, I've gotten my, I've gotten my thing, and even when he had the opportunity to get to to grab a to grab a power boost from Shroud, who by that point was not, was um not ex was not exactly someone who you, who I would consider a good person. Even she had been at that. Mm -hmm. Um, like there, because she had she had tried to she had tried to talk um. She had tried to talk Terui into being into being Philip's partner, and he dismissed the whole thing out of hand. 
Yeah, instead of show. Uh, show well, show. the reason why the, the way that was set up, and, and this is something I think you kind of jumped around, mm -hmm. is that by the time he did get his revenge on Isaka, he actually didn't want it. It wasn't about revenge by that point. Mm -hmm. It was just wanting him to s save someone. He saved a girl that looked like his sister, and it was no longer about strictly revenge anymore. That was a part of him that he left behind. So he had lost that rage, that inherent hatred that he had been, that he had, had, which, by the way, Shroud had been trying to fuel the entire time. Mm -hmm. And by the time he, she had approached him to join with Philip, he had already started catching on to this idea. That she was simply using him as her tool to get revenge on Ryube. And he was like, no, I'm not going to be your tool for revenge. I'm done with revenge. That shit is pointless. Yep. And when it comes... And, um... When it comes to, when it comes to that, I've, I, of course, should, should, should note that, um... The B, the B Stark is, is a, is a, was a prime example of kind of, kind of a turning point for Shotaro. Oh, because yeah. Most yeah, the arc that gave us Cyclone Joker Extreme. Mostly because of the fact that, that by that point, he, the best way to, de the best way to describe his, his role in that arc is Doubt. Because first yeah. off, you have some, you have okay. legit somebody from Sh from um, from Sochi past, past, who Isamu. who is no. who who is causing him is causing him to doubt whether or not he's carrying on the will of the boss. And then you have the doubts that he has what about whether or not he can be whether or not he can be um common rider because of the synchronization problem. Yeah. Which. I agree with this, Shinta. That's again Shroud's fault. It is. Because something that we don't, that a lot of people miss, is that the very first time the synchronization problem doesn't start until after Shroud rescues Philip using the X Taurine a few, uh, an episode or two back. So. It's very likely that whether intentional or not, she had modified Philip's data to basically cause him to desync with Phil or Shotaro, mm -hmm. which led to the problem. Yeah. Until, until Shotaro said, "Fuck that shit." Yeah. No, Shotaro and Philip said, "Fuck that Shotaro shit." Shotaro and Philip, yeah, they both said, "Fuck that shit." And it it doesn't it doesn't hurt that the that um. The combination of the beast and zone dopants is is a classic case in how to, in how to wreck your shit. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. fun fact. The beast and zone dopant co combo was incredible. Oh, it was. A fun fact: the zone dopant played by Shinkuro's actor's wife. Oh, that's what that's nice. that's one way to get hurt. To get her to approve of you filming on location. <laughs> yeah. Um. But. Or the other around the but even with that there, there was the there was the whole there was the whole thing with escalation and. That brings that brings me to, um, one of the biggest missed opportunities that came out of double, and that is mm. Foundation X. Oh, I had a feeling that's where you were going with this. Oh, yes, Foundation X. Oh. Um, Riku Sanjo had literally give it, gift wrapped Toei a brand new villain faction, a cross series villain faction, very much akin to Shocker, on a silver platter, and Mr. Shirakura didn't even realize what he had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he shut that shit down. I was like, he was too busy banking on shocker nostalgia. Now, for those uh, not in the know, here's what had happened. Whee! Riku Sanjo had created a villain faction who were basically overseeing museum's work in Gaia production because they were looking for a new, pow a new power source, new pa new ability, new, new technology. Bankroll. They were bankrolling museum to get new powers. Mm -hmm. 
And the intention, and this carried on through through a bit of Forze, really, but mostly through O's, was that these guys were going to be the new Shocker, a villain, a, a villain faction working behind the scenes. And the way they were designed, the way they were written, they were going to be better than Shocker because oh, even yeah. in their losses, oh, yeah. they never truly were defeated. Only small in, only small cells of Foundation X were ever defeated, as we see at the very end of Double. Mm-hmm. But the main organization was still around. In fact, they have popped up a few times since then. But... Yeah. Hmm? I'd actually like to point out that the most recent... Um appearance of uh foundation x is actually uh common rider brave let's survive revival of the beast rider squad that's so, kind of what i was referring to but thank you for clarifying <laughs> i am well aware i've seen that movie or i've seen I that special <laughs> it's just that you mentioned earlier up to forze and it was just well, that, yeah they were prominently featured up mm-hmm. through forze but they did kind. Of, I, that's why I also said they did still kept, kept. They are still kind of popping up here and there. In fact, I've heard that they might be in the upcoming Common Rider game that's coming out very soon. Yeah, which makes so, sense. So, given so what you're, given what you're saying game. is that they're they're giving gimmies to the Wooby villains. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> but and but yeah, because. At the same time this was going on, and, and O's is probably where this was best exemplified because O's was an anniversary season uh-huh. in multiple ways. It was the 40th anniversary of the franchise. It was also, they had also hit the 1,000th episode of Common Rider. Uh-huh. Like, it was a big deal that uh, during that season. Uh-huh. So even though they had this brand new villain faction gift wrap to them, because of those anniversaries... Toei execs, mainly Mr. Shirakura, decided to focus back on Shocker again, and they never stopped. Yeah. In fact, I think Saber will be where we hit the... It, like Saber or the next series will be where we hit the 1500 mark. Anyway. Um, Chains, did you, did you say O's was the 40th? Because I thought that was Forze. O's well, it was, was the 40th. 40th because of the whole thing with uh, let's go common writers let's go common writers they showed that off they showed that logo off in the beginning of the movie yeah, yeah it, but, it, the actual but, 40th anniversary happened during O's but Forze was basically the 40th anniversary season yeah and the 50th anniversary of space flight exactly so that that's kind of where that comes from it, it's confusing but nonetheless the point still stands they had a brand new villain faction that could have carried them, and it was because of uh, Foundation X we had one of the best crossovers in the entire franchise with Met Movie War Mega Max. Oh hell yeah! That oh, movie. But again, nostalgia goggles didn't come off. Thank you, Mister Shirakura. Not really. Like like I said, me. Uh, me. Everybody needs to be a shocker grunt now, I guess. No. Not oh, happening. None of that. Game on you. Yeah. <laughs> no. I'm not. The other there are a better set of knights that say knee. Keep that up and I'll start saying it. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Now, um... When it come now, when it come when it came to the when it came to some of the supplementary material, now the V Cinema was just eh. Like I I don't yeah. when it comes to a lot of the V Cinema um thro- throughout Common Writer, I don't I don't love or hate it. It's just there. But yeah. when it came to, when it came to the when it came to the crossover movies, both of those were a case of using that time to fill in some blanks. As in, yeah. in the first case with with the uh, for, with the first movie war movie, I mean, on on one hand, you have them finally wrapping up the whole the whole issue with decade, but also going into detail about begins night, as it was referred oh, to. Oh yeah. Which was handled very well with only one misstep in that movie. 
dummy! Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah the dummy Dolphin. Oh dear Jesus H Christ! Which, by the way, the the movies in double they form a they form a theming uh, gap. Yeah, actually, yeah, that's the thing that I think a lot of people forget about is that all of the movies in double actually have a naming pattern, and it's one you wouldn't think about. They're all based on Batman's movies. Yeah, Begins Night, referencing Batman Begins, Double Forever, referencing Batman Forever, and Double Returns, referencing Batman Returns. So, they reference, they reference good, they reference good Batman movies. Yeah. I actually did, I actually did not know they referenced Batman movies. That's new. <laughs> <laughs> you learn something new every day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, when it comes... When it comes to when it comes to all three all three of them, it is it is most definitely a case of the, of either filling in gaps or setting or setting things up. In the case of filling, you have you have begins night, which def, which fills in the gap of of how they met and how how um Philip got the name. Well, Philip from yep Philip Marlowe yep from Philip Marlowe from Marlo. the Long and. When it com- and when it comes to when it comes to um when it com- when it comes to movie war core, which is which um, Do not <laughs> remind me of movie war core. It, oh my god. Okay, okay. Oz's part, bullshit, but that's a whole other topic. Mm-hmm. The main crossover part, bullshit, because core is a terrible villain. But yeah. once again, yes. It's Double's part that salvages the whole thing because the skull portion was actually really fucking good. I'm not sure if it's still I'm not sure if it's still available, but I do remember somebody on TV um, making a supercut of just the skull part of it. Ooh, ooh! I I I had it at one. I had it at one point. I don't. I don't have it now, and I'm not even. I'm not even sure if the thing's. Still being seated, but they they had basically uh, um, made a common writer skull movie that just that just composed of the, of those parts. Now, yeah, it, it is falling back on tradition that the main Dopons in that were the bat and spider. Um, oh, hey, back to traditional form. Yep, bat smite, bat spider snake. Mm-hmm. But. It is where we got our, is where we got our first um, look at the at the early days of the of um, Common Rider Skull, and having and having the boss be be that is appropriate given the given the Skull Man. Oh yes! Oh oh! oh allow yes. me, because I actually brought this up when I when we reviewed when me and my buddy T G Omega reviewed. The original movie war 2010 i had brought this up because yeah for those of you who don't know your common writer history it was actually not originally common writer way back in the day shotaro ishinomori had written a manga called the skull band yep and a lot of elements of double reference again going back to riku sanjo's uh need to you know call back to the past Common Rider Skull is a reference to that, and more, and not just in the design itself, but also in the character, because the original Skull Man was actually, basically, he was a man out for revenge. Hmm, where have we heard that before? Nah. Yeah. But yeah. He, he solved cases involving an evil crime organization, only to find out that his own family were the cause of all the problems. And basically sacrifices, and basically him and his grandfather sacrificed themselves to end it for good. Now, a later version of the Skull Man had become a typical superhero kind of deal. In a similar vein, but without the need for the revenge and the evil family thing. But that had gotten popular enough, that new version was popular enough, that it was going to be adapted. But, Toei Jackson was like... Uh, shut, uh, Ishinomori, you might want to not use the skull as an image, because that could be brought for the kids. Thus, he turned it into a bug theme, and hence, Kamen Rider was born. Mm-hmm. And, as, again, pointing back to Deshinsu's review, and I love the way how he pointed this out, 
the idea that the Skull Man gave birth to the Common Rider was a very nice touch when it came to Shokichi and Shotaro. Oh, it was. And what? And even even when it even when it came to um, Common Rider Skull, you had you had a you had a significant arc in, in that film where he had where he had to really accept that he could that he couldn't just you couldn't just rely on on a few on a few gadgets and a and a gun to deal with to deal with the Dopont case. Tried that and it ended up costing him almost everything. Mm-hmm. Yep. And he, even at the, even at the end he was he basically sti- he was had still to follow his own fucking pride. Which is which is the reason why the uh, his early transformations have are referred to as crystal. And yeah, 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 yeah. crystal skull and all and all that. But the no, but you have that kind of you have that kind of thing with with um with with the guy memories as a whole, where it with synchronization and and adaptation. And yeah, you could definitely see that the that the crystal skull thing of the skull suit just was Sokichi not synchronizing with the memory properly. Well, up until that up until that point, his his mindset was if I u- if I use if I use the skull if I use the uh, skull memory, then I'll lo- then I'll I'll be no different than them, and I'll end up losing my humanity. Uh-huh. Even if even if it was a purified Gaia memory, his his mind. His mindset was one rooted still in his in his pride, and two, the fa- the fact that even even though there's a difference between the purified and the uh, and the non purified guy memories, I don't I think yeah. at that point he didn't see a difference. He did, yeah. That, and that is this all culminates in one of the most glorious scenes and the creation of the infamous catchphrase of counting your sins, because that's exactly what he does at the climax of the film. When he confronts his old partner who ends up being the spider dope on, he starts not by addressing, uh, the guy, the partner, he addresses himself. He starts listing off the mistakes he made that led to this moment. The things that the mistakes he made and doubting, what he had, the tools he had at his disposal, and what it cost him. Mm-hmm. And he tells and them, and, and when they ask, when the, when the guy asks, what are you doing? I'm counting my sins. Now, count yours. The, oh, such a good scene! The, the, other, th- the other thing to, to note is that even, even though he won... It it was a fearic victory at best, because yeah. the ultimate he still paid the price for his, for his own pride in the sense that if he if he were ever to meet up with his do- with his daughter again, they'd both die. Which co- is something I question, because even then. If you killed the Dopont, or if you defeated the Dopont, the powers were supposed to dissipate. So why was he still bugged? I would, I would probably say that consider that possibly uh, the reason why we don't actually see the Bat the Batwoman anymore is because it was like the like the early versions of the Dopont memories. They weren't re- they weren't made to the point where oh, if the, if you defeat the Dopont, the memories just eject and break. Yeah, arguing with the bat with the bat dopon is kind of a moot point because Fair. I don't care if you're a dopon or not. Even if the memory had broken, she was caught in a damn gas explosion. She, she wouldn't get out of that alive. She had to have died. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> kind of hard to argue that point. <laughs> yeah, so I would say that uh, with the with the memories just being early versions of them, I don't think that the, I don't think that the power would have been that easily dissipated. From from the, from the memory breaking. Mm, fair enough. It, it, it's one of those. That's why I didn't say it was a misstep. I just said I question it. 
even yeah, even with question, that, yeah. you probably would have still had the same the same endpoint because taking out taking out two, taking out two parts of of museum's new pet project was undoubtedly going to get their attention. And you know this old, you know this old cliche. Um, yeah. If they're if the if they're given the chance, they're they're going to target family. Oh, so yeah, to stay away from yeah. that. I think they should have ran with that and made that the reason why he could never see Akiko again, because that would have made more sense. Mm -hmm. But that's just my personal opinion on it. Yeah. yeah. Also, we should, yeah we should hurry this up because we still have got at least two other shows to talk about. Yeah. Don't you fuck. Yeah. Um, We've been kind of sitting here on double for a while. <laughs> yeah. Well, the reason <laughs> and I got a lot on the next one. The reason and, why and I good. sat so much on it is because that is because this series ended up providing the direction that that Kamen Rider and I'd I'd say I'd say a large chunk of Tokusatsu needed needed like after after this it did that did become um I guess the best way to put it is the arbiter. For the, for the next se for the next several years, yeah, basically. Which Heisei admittedly makes it much more infuriating that it seems Double's gotten the shaft in recent years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of that is kind of sad. They always try to keep the most recent stuff and the most the stuff with the highest ratings in people's minds. Usually, no, and it's not even just that. I get that. No, 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 no. I'm talking about even when they are trying to pay homage to past writers. Double got the shaft recently because you, did you see Heisei Generations Forever? Nope. Double got shafted in that movie. Oh, he did. With, with all with all the uh, with all the um, booing that I saw on the servers, I refused to watch it because I know it would save me from raging. You you you, you did you chose wisely on that regard, but yeah. First of all, obviously no like the only past character from Double came back was the freaking ramen cart seller. Yeah, it was Master of Fu Men. Well, though they did, they did kind of make up for it in the main series when they brought back uh, Eternal, which was actually kind of badass, admittedly. But yeah, okay. the movie was supposed to be Double's time to shine, and yeah, it was the ramen seller that gives him the freaking do uh, Double ride watch. And then we get to the another writer, another Double. What is the one common element with every another writer in this entire series of Geo? I think tip. I think typically that th that there's been that there's been some that there's always been some sort of connection, or there's the fact that they end up going into the year where that where that series took place. No, because there were exceptions to that rule. The one common element was there was always somebody using a another ride watch to become the that another rider. And for another double, we never find out who that is. Yeah, yeah, we never find it out. It literally, as Period. soon as they destroy him, that's it. You don't see a human underneath. There's no story behind why he became another devil. There was literally nothing. He was just there, and then he was gone. That's... No, I'm really glad I didn't watch it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah. the only reason they had another ride watch, the another double stuff, and then double ride watch in there was because they used that to enter the quote unquote real world to bring Common Rider. It's a, it, you know, you, again, complicated story there, but it, it was really damn stupid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah. That's why I mean when I say double got shafted. Well, but, um,. Now, when it now when it comes to what ha what it what happened afterwards, um, there was there was of course there. Now he had nothing for he had nothing to do with O's, which it, which, uh, which is which is a which is a mixed blessing. And I I know I know Easy swear, swears but swears by its writer, but um, I have issues with her. Yeah, her anime yeah, adaptations are much that. better than her Toku work, to say oh, the least. Yes, she did. Yes, yeah, she did very good Toku work in the nineties. No one's getting. No one's getting and really really I, Yeah, but in the two thousands is where she starts to fall apart because she's yeah, one half of the problems with Ryuki. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then her yeah, last really good Toku work with Shinkenger. Mm-hmm. 
but the the uh, fa the fact is is, is that um, Yasuko Ko Yasuko Kobayashi is some is somebody who desperately desperately needs somebody to yank the proverbial leash. Yeah, but that's another thing. Then we go on to Forze, which Sanjo did have a hand in, but this is another case of he didn't work alone. No. And i th I think in I think in the case of Forze, I'm not sure I'm not sure if he outright I'm not sure if he outright said it. But he can he considers he does not consider that he considers that more Nakashima's baby than his. Yeah, which does make sense. It has a lot more of Nakashima's style to it, uh, and things like that. Though there is one aspect that is clearly Sanjo's handiwork, and that's the ending, because. The ending is very much a Riku Sanjo ending. One thing you will very quickly learn about Riku Sanjo's work when it comes to how he ends a series mm -hmm. is that he always leaves it open-ended. He always says there's more to do, even though it's very obvious that the series is done and there's no reason to continue it. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, he can. Now, granted, he'd continue double with with the Futo Detectives manga, but. That, but that was, I'd say, I'd say the Futo Detective manga was just, was just a means for, was just a means for him to do, to do stories that he otherwise couldn't. Yeah. More than but, like, yeah. But with every other series after that, it was very clear, like, he always left it so that, yeah, they had, their work was not over, but the story as it was, was done. Like, Double's ending, again, not spoilers, but it's over 10 years old now. I think I can get away with spoilers by this point. Yeah. Was that, you know, Philip had died and come back, and there were still Dopons in the city. But, Museum was gone, Foundation X was no longer involved, it's just they were basically there to keep cleaning up the city and keep it safe. There was nothing for us to keep watch on anymore. It's just that they had more work to... They just had to continue on being double. And that's kind of Riku Sanjo's thing. And Forze was kind of the same way. The bad the bad guy was done. A character was gone, but had come back. But And it was clear that Forze's work could continue on, but there was it was with something new. It wasn't with the main story anymore. The only exception to that particular ending structure would probably be Drive. Yeah, he was a he was a police officer anyway. He was a police detective. So yeah, his, his work as a as a common writer was basically done, especially since Krim sealed himself away. Again, spoilers for a five year old. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I agree. Yeah, that's that. I, I would say it's it's not the exact same structure, but it's similar enough that it can be acceptable. Yeah, I, I, I'm just thinking it's probably an exception that proves the rule. That they're still you might not be wrong. Be done, You're not entirely wrong there either. So we'll, yeah, we'll look at common. that. We'll get to. <laughs> but that br that brings, but that that brings. Now, when it comes to dr when it comes to drive, you you do have a you do have a lot of um, familiar elements. Although drive took a little bit to really get on its feet, and I'd say I'd say yeah. I'd say the true. I'd say I don't think anyone would argue that the true breakout when it came to drive was Chaser. Yeah, Chaser. Uh, uh, yeah, well, Chaser becoming co a common writer was so good. Yes, it was. I will agree that. But Catharsis. the problem I had with Drive, and I still held this to this day, is, and this I don't. I I immediately know this was not Riku Sanjo's fault. I want to make that very clear up front. Executive Medley reared its ugly head on this one because the first 15 to 20 so episodes was flooded with gimmick uh, shift cars. The shift cars. Uh, it, let's every toys. episode, a new shift car out of nowhere makes no sense where it came from. It's just there and it's there to give him a new ability. I hated it the gimmick itself was already silly enough i mean 
unlike other series where the gimmick still felt like something special, we're playing with toy cars here. Yeah. <laughs> There's no other way around. We're wheels. playing with fucking toy cars. Yeah. But, and I don't mind having gimmicks and toy sales in a series. Hell, one of my other favorite series is x aid and that had toy sales through the fucking roof. Mm -hmm. But, <laughs> Yeah. There was a purpose behind every single one of them, even if it did get over uh, overcrowded at times. But with Drive, the problem was it made no sense where these came from, and it just got exacerbated. It, it just got exhausting after a while. And if okay. I weren't, if I didn't have to watch the show for our stream that we did, we, we do every Sunday, I'd have probably given up long before Chaser became a uh, became a common writer. I would have quit. That is, it, it became what I like to call a dead start series. A series that starts dead in the water and you have to get to a certain point before you get to the quote unquote good part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that is a problem. I think that uh, another really gimmicky, like when it comes to uh, Mock and Chaser, they're not as gimmicky as Drive is. Um, no. Look at every piece of Drive's arsenal. The steering wheel sword turns when he turns the steering... What? Yeah. yeah the handle. That, that was... That, that was... And, the, and, and the car door gun where you have to open and close oh it to god, the door. Oh god, the yeah. door too. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the but, door uh, gun. but then, you know, Mock had the the... The it, his gun was cool because the oh, signs, yeah, 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 the, 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 yeah the, the the signs that he had affected how the bullets traveled, which makes more sense than a steering wheel steering how you're cutting things. Yeah, and then of course Chase just had the uh, crosswalk axe, mm -hmm. the oh, single yeah, axe. axe, yes, the one where you had to wait before you could actually use it. <laughs> oh, and, 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 and it creates a crosswalk when he cuts people with it. Yeah. yeah. Nah. It's the it is the best thing. I love that axe. That axe is the best. It, it it's silly, but it's that good kind of silly, you know? It's the silly you've come mm -hmm. to expect yeah. from, from Neo Heisei um yes. No. And we and a lot of us have actually given the Signal X a another nickname. The belt killer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that now that being said. Earlier, I talked about the fact that he, that um, Sanjo is not good with large casts because of no. because of his desire to um, get to give things detail. Mm -hmm. So then, Toei, in its in, in its infinite wisdom, decided to decided to give decided to give him the reins to a to a Sentai season, and told uh. him, "Oh yeah, we're oh yeah, this is going to be a ten person team." <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, yeah. But even though it was a ten-person team, Kyoto Uger is so good. Oh, it's oh, yeah. good. Like they're, 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 this is not us bashing on Kyoto Uger. We like Kyoto Uger. I just feel really bad for Sanjo. That must have been hell for him. That what well, you was. know was. You well, guys well, by he the was... end, he had just tossed his hands in the air and just gave up. Well, and then and then you have the same the same issue with um. It looked like more executive meddling with the Judenji. Uh, being, how, how, come on, Ovi Rapu. Oh, what? Of you had to bring oh, up the farting, char the farting battery. The, the, yeah. farting, the farting egg dinosaur. Come on. Yeah, it was bad. And, and, and yeah, their model was a little bit of executive meddling, though I think Drive still had it worse in that regard. Oh, definitely. But. Yeah. I think Sanjo at least had already had uh, had an idea of how to make it work here, and was able and didn't have it shoved in it so bad that he couldn't work with it because a lot of the Zudenshi made sense. Yes, there were a few that came out of nowhere because they had already had a few of the batteries going in, and so it did get kind of silly. But mm -hmm. they didn't have it all of them like that, like the shift cars did. Yeah, no. There, most of the most. You're you're right there. Most of the Jidenji are very, uh, very, very. Um, I don't want to say logical because none of it's logical, but <laughs> they they fit 
the context of the show. Mm -hmm. I'll put it that yeah. way. But and getting to the point that Melger was making when it comes to the cast, yeah, you can clearly tell that this was Sanjo's Achilles heel in action because a lot of those senshi did not have much in the way of development, especially no. those like the spirit rangers who end up getting replaced halfway through and things like that. The only reason um, our Silver Ranger gets development is because he had been, uh, Torin had been throughout the series already to develop. He was the mentor. He was yeah, the he mentor was up until that point, so he had time to develop. But even some of the main cast didn't always have the best of developments. They, some of them, like, I think, I'd say Ian and maybe. Uh, there's a couple of them that just didn't have. Them. Yeah, I'd say Nosan was up there, though. They, he got a decent amount of development. He wasn't too bad. Yeah. I, I'd say Ian was the weak link in that one, but only by a little bit, not by much. Yeah, but Ian Ian gets a pass, and do you know why? He has the same gravitas as Boken Black. They're both... yeah, that's why I say it's not oh, very... It's so even, the, even the weakest link wasn't that weak there, because, yeah, he was he, he still had enough charisma and energy to him to, ca to carry himself without now, the need for much development. To be fair, while he did have the same amount of charisma, um, he did not transform himself off of A, mid-air, and B, the bullet of a boss, like Boken Black did. Um, I, actually, <laughs> I actually had those saved as GIFs on my, on my computer because I was, I was live-streaming these ages ago when I, was, when I was much younger. And a friend of mine... Uh, was just like, that is the sickest I, I have ever seen. I'm like, yeah, he literally caused his his Boken, his Boken transformation, his, uh, oh, what were the phones called again? Oh. The, the, the Accelular. Yes, the Accelulars. He, he literally caused the, the wheel on the Accelulator to spin, A, off of midair at one point, and B, off, <laughs> off of the bullet, off of the bullet from King Ryuan. It was so Best yeah, gotta love it. But let's let's get back on to Kyoyuju here. Yeah. And of course, well first before we get to the part I really want to talk about, we've got to talk about the sixth ranger of this series, Uchi. Mm. Oh yeah, Uchi oh, Sorry. Sorry. Uh. One, I loved his character. Having to go from an era where he was serving his king and his king kind of Kind of being a dick, really, when you think about it, mm -hmm. you know, and, and and believing that he had to be a strong, unwavering badass in a world that a character like that doesn't fit in anymore. I loved that fish out of water mentality that they created for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a temporal fish out of water. Yeah, I thought that was really well handled and everything with it, but his crowning moment is also an example of Riku Sanjo when it comes to dealing with parent groups. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What? Oh, yeah. This fucking episode. Oh. Yeah. Riku Sanjo has made it very clear that he has a disdain for parent groups and, and their need to protect the children. Yeah. Because in one episode... He had entered. He had had this. He had a one-off character of a spoiled brat, who, as soon as anyone even tried to slight him, he'd blow a whistle, and his parents would come running and scold whoever it's whoever had uh, had, had harmed their precious child. And this is where Riku Sanjo's writing really gets fun, <laughs> and the chat loving this because they knew we were going to have to talk about this one. Mm, Having yeah. the monster of the week woo his parents away with their power and basically leaving the kid alone to fend for himself and make him realize, wow, I was a dick, wasn't I? <laughs> and have to accept yeah. that you have to take your own responsibility for things and, and handle things yourself was probably one of the best episodes I'd ever seen. Yeah. because I just, I, I just want to mention that monster. It's like, yeah, like, the monster had a cutesy mode, and it also had a 
Goth is oh, yeah, Alita Kyo, mode. Kyo, Kyo, Kyo in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. what made it even better, and Among, I'll let you have this mm-hmm. after this. This was another exa- This was also showing that freaking we had a Red Ranger who wasn't a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, Di- like, Di- 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 Monster Di- transforms right in front of them. Like you can't hurt me. I'm a cute little monster. Like psh, I saw Di- you Di- transform Di- in front of Di- you. Di- 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 yep. <laughs> like you know, I just saw you change right in front of my face, right? <laughs> Daigo, Daigo was fantastic. Like, oh no, so common sense. <laughs> anyway, there's, yeah. there's a reason they Gia call him Daigo. Him. Not a moron. Now, the o- there's on there's only there's only a couple glaring things, and Shinta's brought Shinta's brought this up and has brought this up in the past, and I do and it's something I do think um, des- deserves some talk about. Um, for one. And this is this is my own, this is my own personal thing, and I know I know it was a movie exclusive thing, but I kind of I kind of wish we had gotten a little bit more out of um out of out of um, Night Hunter D. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, to be fair, I yeah. think they handled him better than most because they did actually bring him back into the series proper. Yeah. I was just and a sucker did. for for his for for his, for his original set his original setup. Oh yeah. Um, also, you can never go wrong with Mamoru motherfucking Miyano. No, no, you cannot. The uh, the other thing is the is that the the is is that when when it because of the fact that they ended up using Vam- Vamola Kyoyuger a bit too much. Yeah. The the scene at the, the scene at the end doesn't have the weight that it normally would have. Yeah, yeah admittedly. Now that that being that being said, there's de- there's definitely a lot there's definitely a lot to like. Although um, a meme that I had considered, at, but never but was never able to finish was was in, was the was the whole was the whole singing thing when it came, when it came to Lucky Roo. <laughs> and uh, especially oh no no not not, not, not for you Candelera Candelera sorry. And because because of the fact that Shinta referred to that it referred to that as as a as bard like, I was like, you know what usually happens to bards, right? They fucking die. Uh huh. <laughs> Go watch Dork This Rising. Fifty dead bards. <laughs> and <laughs> I had no. I had never, I had never gotten around to to fin- to finishing the meme, but that was that was one that I that I had in the, that I had in my back burner. But also, you could probably make a drinking game out of the number of um, cameo act cameo actors throughout the series. Oh yeah, so there's a lot of past kind of in that series. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah, Soji's uh, Soji's parents being in a black and dying of pink. So I guess that's one. I guess that's one case of sh- of shipping that ended up actually ha- actually happening. Unfortunately, <laughs> well, the actors at least. Um, and then they had a cool full role reversal. Yeah. Uh huh. But the the thing is, is that is that it go even with the, even with that the other the other major misstep I would I would say is. Is is once once again falling into a trap that had this is this was something that had been going on for a few years and um, unfortunately hasn't stopped. And that is and that is having the Red Ranger get the get the major upgrade mm-hmm. oh, instead, yeah. of, instead of a group thing. I think I think the last time that we had a group. Upgrade motif was Ghost Sager. Uh, no, Go Busters. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That'd, yeah, that'd be it'd be Go Busters. Um. So, but, so it wasn't that long since that last happened, but it was starting to become a lot more prevalent that there were single single person power ups. Shin Kenger had that. Bo Kenger had it. Yeah, in most in in a lot of them though, it, it was a power up that could be shared around. Uh, Ingromaru uh, was something that any of the Shinkenjers could use. Um, yeah. Whereas, whereas uh, in 
Kyoto Yuji, you had Carnival, which was exclusive to Daigo because it was from Tiramigo. Yeah, I think he was the. I think that was the first time that it started. Got it, Tira, not Tiramigo. That's a soldier. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh yes, excuse me, Gabatira. My my brain is all. It's midnight, guys. Just please, give me give me a break. Um, yeah. when, Fine. when it comes to but when it comes to when it comes to that, I I will fr- I will freely admit that I'm more, that I will always be more partial to. To um, group upgrades rather than, rather than individual ones. Agreed. Because mm-hmm. because and then I... look, I I know that there is often the focus on on the on the red senshi, but um, there is uh, there is such a thing as creep, and that's and that's kind of be, that's kind of become a thing for a for a while where where um it's almost it, instead of it being a team, it's almost like. One get one guy and a bunch of people following him. I.e. the I.e. D and D's wizard problem. <laughs> um, but th- and that br- that brings me to, I. That brings, I try I try and talk about good shit, but um, I have to talk about how the things that followed up with Kyoryuger did not live up, mostly because Sanjo Ugh. wasn't involved. Because yeah. the two the two crossover movies were one of them one of them was was a case of trying to do two things at once, because you're tr- you're trying to you're trying to cross over and f- and follow up on events from Go Busters, and do this whole dinosaur crossover at the same time. Yeah, yeah, that was. I mean, it was it was epic for what it was, but it didn't come without problems. It- uh huh. Yeah, if you really looked at it, if you really looked at it, despite it being awesome, it had problems up the ass. And I'm a holist, so I can't, so I can't give it a pass. And no, I don't blame yeah. you there. Then there, then there was the Tokuja crossover, which managed, which managed. Oh, to be don't remind me about Tokuja. Th- this, oh, is where, this is where, this is where Sakura's trope of the endings actually came back to cause trouble. Because Yasuko Kobayashi didn't realize that that ending was up. supposed to be followed up on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's also the fact that I, f- I feel like I feel like Kobayashi was being a bit spiteful. <laughs> oh wait, oh. Kobayashi <laughs> not be, uh, being spiteful? Huh? Must be the evidence and why. The and why? Because is there an echo? There was. There was <laughs> so- now I have I have made it. Cl- Look, I get I understand why shows like Nin Ninja and uh, and um Q- and Q Ranger have become have become punching bags by the community. I get that. Yeah. I will, mm-hmm. however, maintain that Tokyo does not get enough hate. I don't like especially with how especially with how terrible it it handled imagination because she has no concept of of what imagination actually is supposed to be. Kira Major's um in sparkleration from Judo is way more. Uh, oh way yeah, more cool. the King. Yeah, yeah that fits the bill much better. Yeah, it's I, it's I, a lot better for imagination. Mm-hmm. I think what it is is that I think Kobayashi was actually also taking pot shots at a Kiba Ranger. Because Akiva Ranger <laughs> was actually doing imagination for their delusions. Yeah, you can see why I'm, why I'm super pissed. Although, yeah. if if you're take, although it it's not exactly a good look to take shots at a parody. It's yeah. it's, like, it's like taking it's it's like ta- it would be like taking pot shots at um. Well, I, I was going to use Saturday Night Live as my as my example, but. It's it is very much like t- like um try- like trying to like trying to mock a obvi- an obvious co- an obvious comedy. Here, here, I'll give you an example. It's like taking pot shots in a Mel Brooks movie. Mm-hmm. Or uh-huh. it, or it's much like this joke. Um, do you want to, do you want to know what irony is, son? What, Dad? See that guy with arms over without any arms over there? Tell him to clap. But Dad, I'm blind. Exactly. <laughs> it's like taking it's like taking a pot shot at something that is a clear joke and just expanding it further. Mm-hmm. Um 
<laughs> Akiba. Yeah. I would I would say that Akiba Ranger is more official than than some of the other Sentai on this on this list, though. <laughs> yeah, I was like, like the like one of the one of the things that really felt like Kobayashi taking a pot shot at Akiba Ranger was, of course, the whole bit in um, Tokyo Uger versus Kyoto Uger where like uh, the Kyoto Ugers weren't able to get through the barrier because they like they had no imagination or some bullshit. I was like, really, really. Daigo has no imagination. Lady, have you watched the show? <laughs> Clearly um, not. <laughs> honestly, I don't. Honestly, yeah, she really yeah. hasn't. Honestly, I don't. I don't think. She, I don't think she did because this was around that time when she was doing an insane, an insane amount of work in the span of a year. Yeah, yeah I think yeah, that was more of a problem than anything. She was overworked. Because mm-hmm. burn pressure, that zero, zero black blood, and Attack on Titan. Yikes. At the same time. Yeah, she's she was getting stretched thin. Clearly. Um, on I'll one hand, that de- that's definitely the case. On the other hand, um she could have she could have said no at any at any time, so um so oh, I'm could've. not giving any I'm yeah, not giving that's her all any her fault. Um, no simpy. But what but um in the main re- the I remember that there I remember that there was a poll t- taken and um things things like ge- things like gender swap and ki- and kid episodes were were seen as the most loathed um and this and this was by and this was by people in Japan not by people in the states although I'm pretty sure most of us don't exactly care for those kind of episode gimmicks either no. nope um <laughs> now that be that being that being said, um, when it when it comes the ones the one series that he's that he's apparently had some involvement in that I'd that um I'd like I'd have liked to take a look at but I don't know if it's even subbed is um, Bima X. Oh, it is subbed. It's on KRDL. Bima X is the uh, Indonesian one, isn't it? Yeah. Bima and Bima X. Even though he mainly worked on Bima X. By the way, why the hell does Bima only have Gak be a guest star for two episodes? Because he doesn't <laughs> come cheap. Yeah. yeah. Gak don't come cheap. As, as much bear, as mind, a... bear in mind, Flutter, Gak's been in American Hollywood films. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. And 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 she also the first short time Garo Hono no Kokuin too. Huh. Anyway. And and also keep in mind that Gact as much of a polyglot as he is, I don't think he knows Indonesian very well. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now the other and now of course Sanjo st- apparently even now he's still he's still He's still do he's still doing work in in Toku. There's a cup there's a couple episodes of um Kira Major and Zero One that he's credited. Yeah, episodes eleven and twelve of Zero One and Nine and Ten and Eight and Nine of uh, Kira Major. Um which granted only only doing a only doing a few episodes and I wouldn't I would I would consider that more of more of a help more of a helper thing. I do think his primary focus these days yeah. is the Futo Detectives manga. Oh, more than, oh, definitely. Um, as far as far as whether or not he'll ha- he'll have the he'll have the reins for a Tokusatsu series in the future, I I see I can see that happening, but I don't see it being Common Rider or Super Sentai. I I don't... see it being. Either Ultraman or Garo. I honestly don't. I honest, I honestly don't think he's he's interested in the um, office politics of the of of those particular areas. No, he's and, not. And having and having do, and having done having done Common Rider in one form or another for oh, for about a Common Rider and Tokusatsu for about for about a decade. Um, I'm pretty sure he would re- he would rather he would rather seek a new challenge. Um, mm-hmm. It would be interesting to 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 see what he could pull to see what he could pull off with Garo, whether it be a live action or an animated version. Um, 
Mm -hmm. As as far as as far as Ultraman, Ultraman's kind of in its own bubble, as I as I said earlier. Yeah, it is true. Um, at the very at the very least, he at I'd actually if if he does if he did something with Ultraman, at the very least, he'd probably be able to he'd probably be able to. Pull off the whole drawing from drawing from past Ultraman without it fe without it feeling contrived. Seriously, mm -hmm. do you have any do you have any idea how sick of that, how sick of that concept I am? Uh. Uh -huh. we've, we've had to deal with that. We've had to deal with that particular thing for I'd say the better. I'm trying to I'm trying to think of the last time that we had that we had somebody in the Ultra series that didn't use that gimmick. And no, don't bring Maybe up yes. Red Man. Mebius was the last time that happened. And how long ago was that? Too long. Almost, almost 15 years ago, yeah. I'd want to see Sanjo do a Godzilla movie. Oh, that'd be great. It's that Toku's thoughts. Really interesting. And it doesn't have a large it usually does not have a very large cast. You have a few people who are following the natural disasters that are the kaiju. And I think he could do something really unique with it that isn't bad like some of the more unique things we've been seeing like a city made of Godzilla nanomachines. <laughs> Urobuchi does not work for Godzilla. I'm sorry. Stick to fate, dude. Game fan? No. We didn't because this that doesn't qualify here because we didn't yeah, we we didn't. Also, we, didn't. we know about that. One, we one we know, and two, and two. I'm not going. I'm not going to comment on. I'm not going to comment on Saber until until I start seeing footage. Yeah, that speculation. Yeah, speculation at this point would just be really premature. Anything that we might discuss could immediately be turned on its anyway. head. Yeah. He met on Tokurus, but you guys didn't either, Shades. I know that for a fact. Well, that's because, mm. that's because co covering that wouldn't um wouldn't fit wouldn't fit within your policy. Yeah. Now, as far but um, honestly, the way the way I see things going, he, you're probably gonna, <laughs> you're probably going to see Sanjo. Working, working more in manga, or, me, or even working in anime again before he does anything with Toku. Like if Fudo Detectives gets an anime, I don't see that happening. I think that I <laughs> mostly, mostly because trying to trying to trying to convert a Tokusatsu into an anime is is not is is not an idea is not an ideal um, setup. Yeah, I mean it. Right? Can it be? Can it be done? Yes. However, it's it? on one hand, it's de it's def it's definitely a case of um whether or not whether or not it should whether or not it should. On the on the other hand, we already we already tried that little experiment with Garo, and that was a mixed bag. Yeah. yeah, first series, was, first series was fine. The latest series, not so much. Mm -hmm. But, e but even with even with that, um, the sole re the the at the end of at the end of the day, he is gonna, he is going to be the person who's going who's going to be credited as as give as giving to, as giving Tokusatsu the direction that it had for the latter half of the. Of the of the Heisei era and the and the early and the early days, well, so so far of the Reiwa era. Although, um, well, I, we've seen we although I haven't been able, I haven't been able to ke to catch up when it comes to when it comes to Kira Major because it kind of got lost in the shuffle, what with me moving and all. But uh -huh. I've I haven't I have enjoyed I have enjoyed zero one. Um, even though it even though it is carrying some of the DNA of X Aid, <laughs> yeah. 
More than you what know, with, my what friend. With, what with Bowser bitch and all, and yes, that's my nickname for Guy. Um, Especially after <laughs> this week. But from what little I saw of, of Kira Major, it didn't it didn't seem too terrible. What's what's been your take on it? Having having looked at it during uh, the riffs. Uh. Uh, basically, it's been fun. We, we're still kind of getting adjusted to the new, to the new guy, because, yeah, spoiler alert, Six Rangers been unleashed. Uh, but, other than that, it's been a fun series so far. My take I, uh, on Cure... Oh, what? sorry, I interrupt there. I was gonna say, my take on Cure Major is, um, it's, it's a safe return to form. The, a lot oh, of... Yeah. A lot of the very staple Sentai tropes are showing their their heads here. We've got the the bumbling, a little bit bumbling, but extremely high energy red. We've got our cool, but sometimes there's a crack in the facade blue. And you know, we we had a a, a sixth ranger that took some convincing that he could he needed to work together with the team instead of going on his own. Mm -hmm. Some very some very staple tropes that come from Sentai, but it's all executed very well, and so it doesn't wow. feel rote. Now, the the reason behind that is very obvious, because the head writer for that series is legendary uh, Sentai writer Naruhisa Arakawa. Like, he knows Sentai like the back of his fucking hand. He's the guy who oh, wrote yeah. uh, Akiba Ranger. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Which is he why he can lampoon everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's a reason why it's going to a lot of basic tropes because he knows those tropes like they're no, like no one's business. Mm -hmm. and, and that's true, game fan. That this red, while he is high energy and a bit bumbling, he isn't the loud screaming type of bumbling. He is, I would God. not. I would not qualify. I would not say that he that he would that he would be considered a idiot red. No, oh, not he, by he, any oh, means. He, not if an anything, he, he's the far savant. Far yeah, he's a savant, but he bumbles because he's he's awkward. He's he, yeah, he's high he's energy, but very awkward. awkward. In fact, many of many much like Philip, many have considered uh, Judo to be basically a, a, a symbol for autism. Like he's very, he's which, almost autistic in his yeah, actions, which I agree, especially with how apprehensive he is on in many in many things. Um, he's it's very that sort of mindset is very is very common among uh, among artists and especially among painters like you look at it you look at every great you look at every great painter over over the last 500 years and um they've always had a bit of a screw loose slavish attention to detail because they're <laughs> self perfect they're perfectionists and self critics of the highest order mm -hmm. yeah they are. Mm -hmm. um the same the same applies with with most creatives. Period. You, every, every every one of them has has something not right. Let's say, like all of us here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I think I think with most of us here, we'd have an easier time finding things that are right. <laughs> the, list of, the list of things that are not right and the screws loose are so many it's a surprise the machine still holds together yeah well people people still people still drive fords right <laughs> <laughs> doku that is a lie doku normal uh those words don't belong in the same sentence <laughs> no they do uh, not they do you not. Yeah. Yeah. If you were normal, you'd be you'd be um, punctual. Ooh, he even <laughs> said things that no me. He just also, if you're normal, normal, you don't belong here. Uh, no, the, uh, it's an open bar. It's for everybody, even the normies. The normies just have their own corner. <laughs> <laughs> well, they look at everybody else at the bar and go, "I don't want to sit next to those guys." Oh yeah, the kitty table. <laughs> we even have party hats. <laughs> mm -hmm. And when, but the, but I, th I think, I think that's, I think that's gonna do, that's gonna do it for this particular ep episode of of the of the watch. Next week yep. will be something different. Will be something different. And I know, I know. 
I know some. I know some are ho are hoping that um, that I'll be doing something Tokusatsu related. That will that will not necessarily be the be the case for for next week. Because for those for those who this is again be the first intro into Geek Watch, we are about discussing topics from all forms of geekdom. Some one week it might yeah. be anime, one week it might be video <laughs> games. Damn it, Zan. <laughs> one week it might be it might be Toku related. Um, Akira is saying Sonic related. Don't push it. <laughs> yeah, don't fucking push it. We could do that on one of the video game episodes. Yeah, but we we yeah. already did. We just did a video game episode last week. I don't feel like I don't yeah. feel like delving that for a, for a little bit. Um, you don't want to double dip. No. Nope. But with but with that with that said, there will there will be there will be some more there will be some more surprises along the way and. And of course, I'm still I'm still going to be doing I'm still going to be getting in on that interview grind because time zones. I hate them. Oh yeah. Uh, speaking of interviews, you mind if I do a little bit of a plug? Go right ahead. Oh, uh, here yeah. we go. Here we go. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. So for my anime fans watching tonight, uh, over on the RVT Twitch channel, Twitch.tv/RVTEntertainment, this Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern. We have an interview ourselves, as I will be, me and my crew will be sitting down with voice actress Madeline Morris. Uh, you might not know her stuff specifically, but uh, she's done she's uh, done a ton of different stuff. She's gonna be in the up, she's gonna be one of the new characters in the upcoming season of Fire Force. She's Hibiki Sakura in How Heavy Are the Dumbbells You Lift, and she's also played a part in a certain anime called Hensuki. Which, oh boy, if you've seen that series, you know. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> yes. I'm half tempted to pop popcorn for that tomorrow. <laughs> hey, what do you mean tomorrow? Uh, Space is dying. warped and time is bendable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought we were doing watch parties on Mondays, my bad. Well, makes you think I'm doing Hensky tomorrow. <laughs> mm. That's why I was thinking about making popcorn for it. I, I would also just like to state that uh, we actually have our first testimonial for the Zadari Spec 1.0. Oh, God. Oh. Coming, from, coming from Protect and Serve, he says that the Zadari Spec leaves his brain in top gear. <laughs> 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 Uh, I need I I need to I need to find somebody who can do who can who can do that look who can do that logo. You're really gonna make a Zatari Enterprises logo? If I can if I can find if I can if I can find somebody who'll take a commission on it. Let me uh let me know if you do and what the commission is. I'll I'll go in halfway. Uh, all right all right, but though those are all sto those are all stories for an for another day. In the meantime, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, and join the watch.